Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Aso, this is Aso Tarot, and in today's pick a card reading, we are going to be doing a classic that I know a lot of you love. I have heard your calls from the ether, and we are gonna be looking today at how your person is currently feeling about you. So let's go ahead and start by breaking down everything that is going to be in this reading. So we're gonna start with an energy check, of course. Um, obviously, if you resonate with one side or both sides, then the reading is for you. If it, you resonate with both sides as a sign of mirror, but if the energy check part isn't resonating, then that is not the reading for you. Then I'm going to use the tarot deck that you pick to look at your person's current thoughts about you, feelings for you, and what actions they are most likely going to be taking towards you. After that, I'm going to use my homemade channel messages just to clarify what we've pulled and see if there's any more information. And then we're just going to finish off with some guidance for this connection using this mega deck. So very excited for that. If this reading resonates and you're enjoying it, there will be a spicy extended on Vimeo, which will be 18 plus. Congratulations to all the asexuals out there. Y'all just say $4. But for the rest of you, we are going to be looking at what about you turns them on and also what about you they're attracted to. Then we are going to be looking at how they perceive your spicy connection, how they feel about your spicy connection. If you haven't been intimate with them yet, um, it's it will just be how they how they're seeing it, how they feel about it now, like what they think it might be like. And I figured I might pull two for like your most previous encounter, like how they perceive and feel about it, like what the most recent encounter was, it would be based on like that perspective. Then we are going to look at their spicy fantasies and desires when it comes to you and see what uh, juicy information comes up there. And then we are going to look at your next or first spicy encounter with them and see what information we can get there. And then we are going to finish off with some guidance for you to help you with self-confidence and embracing your spicy side and embodying that without any shame. So if you are interested, that will be linked down below. Um, the extenders are really fun and honestly a great way to support me. And we have a lot of fun over there. I swear a lot more and I'm a lot more unhinged and chaotic if, um, you could believe that but that is what we are going to be doing today a lot to get into and i'm so excited to do it so we have four different tarot decks piles cards to choose from starting with the first deck i'm going to be using the edgar Allan poe tarot and i have this selenite heart on top and then for pile two we are going to be using the Darkwood Tarot, and I have this green Aventurine Angel on top. And then for Pile 3, we are going to be using the Everyday Witch Tarot, and I have this Bumblebee Jasper Sun on top. And then for Pile 4, we are going to be using the Tarot Tarot of Wonderland, something like that, deck with this gold stone star on top. Side note, if you like decks with really good guidebooks, all of these decks have great guidebooks, but I would say my top two, Darkwood Tarot, Tarot of Wonderland, Tarot in Wonderland, something like that, excellent guidebooks. I love them so much. So just a little side note if you, if you were curious. Um, but with that being said, or if you like Edgar Allan Poe, this is cool because it like ties in like literary stuff with um, tarot. But anyway, that being said, if you need time to pick your pile or piles, feel free to do that. If you need to meditate, do whatever, feel free to pause the video. Um, obviously, if you're having trouble, the energy checks should help you. Um, it's absolutely okay to pick more than one deck. You could be asking about multiple connections or you could be asking about the same connection. It's possible that different decks could have different perspectives or just add more nuance. So take what resonates. Don't let the rest take from you. I just burped, so I will say, you know, don't let your overthinking tendencies or, you know, your linear mind get in the way of the messages trying to get to you. As If it resonates, it's meant for you. If it doesn't, 
It's not, it's literally that simple. I know that makes some people's brains like wanna break, but it literally is that simple. <laughs> um, but once you have picked your pile or piles, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box or the comment section where I will have the timestamps for each reading listed below, as well as the link to the Spicy Extended. I can't wait for y'all to visit me over there. But with that being said, that's all I have to say. So go ahead and pick your pile or piles and I will see you in your reading. Hi there, Pile 1. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Selenite Heart, I don't want to put her, and the Edgar Allan Poe Tarot, then this is going to be your reading. So we're going to go ahead and start with the energy check. If you would like a full breakdown of the reading as well as what is in the Spicy Extended, feel free to check that out as well. It's all in the intro. But we're going to go ahead and start by looking at you and them in a person A, person B format. I'm sorry for those of you who don't like this format. I cannot please everyone and this makes the most sense to me. So we're gonna go ahead and start with person A. And for person A, we have the oyster as well as humor. The energy connecting, well, let's do person B first. For person B, we have the phoenix and we have held. And then for the connecting energy between you two, we have Journey in Reverse, as well as Thoth with Wisdom. So, I always say this, but all you need is to resonate with one side. If you resonate with both sides, that's absolutely okay. That's likely indicative of mirroring with your person. But if you don't resonate with this part at all, this is not your reading. I would try a different one. So person A is going to be the oyster person and person B is going to be the phoenix person. <laughs> it makes me think of like bird person from Rick and Morty. But um, starting with, actually I actually want to start with a phoenix person because they're clearly going through a very powerful shift right now. And it's definitely related to their root chakra. If you're the phoenix or your person is the phoenix, there's definitely a huge transformation energy here where you or them are letting go of the past. The phoenix person is definitely in this space of like rapid transformation, letting go of the past, letting things fall away, and also a newfound sense of security and safety. Ooh, look at how look at how much this is going. A lot of a lot of heat where there's smoke there's fire if you know what i mean <laughs> like a phoenix ah! <laughs> anyway i'm in such a silly energy you guys must like to be silly with each other um which you should be like best love language is silliness um anyway i definitely think the phoenix person is very preoccupied with these transformations but there's this, definitely this newfound sense of um security within themselves security within their life path like there's kind of more of this understanding of even if i don't know exactly where i'm going i know i'm gonna be okay i also think that this is just um this phoenix card is evidence of just powerful growth and powerful evolution i feel like this phoenix person has had to be more concerned with themselves recently um but it's not because they're like ignoring anyone intentionally. It's just, it seems like they've been going through a lot spiritually. This is a spirit card. And the fact that we have held, it's kind of like um, the Phoenix person has been in a bit of um, a hermit mode or an isolation mode where really the only contact they're having is if it is like spiritually conducive for them right now. I feel like if um, like the Phoenix person is probably like telling people like, hey, sorry, I've been MIA, like things have just been crazy or things like that. Um, but yeah, they've definitely been going through a lot in terms of regenerating and growing. And I feel like the Phoenix person feels a newfound sense of like security within themselves, a new confidence within themselves, and this recognition of the fact that they are a new version of themselves. Like I'm hearing uh, Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa, which is a bop. Um, like the, just specifically the lyrics did a full 180. I feel like that's where the Phoenix person is. And I think the Phoenix person is also recognizing like how much how much they're held, how much they're loved, how much love is around them. And yeah, this is like a really, really beautiful energy. And I feel like if anything, I definitely think with the connecting energies here being journey in reverse and both with wisdom, there, the connection is either in like a limbo place or there hasn't been a whole lot of like communication going on between the two of you. Um, even if you're like literally together, it seems like you both could be a kind of like a disconnect. Like I'm not saying what your relationship status is. Like you could literally be with this person. You could be in a situation ship. You could just be friends. 
whatever the case may be. Um, I don't like to use the word in separation because I don't really, well, I guess unless like you were married to them and literally in like a separation in that way, that makes sense. But I don't like to use it in terms of like a spiritual separation because like you're always connected to people in spirit and like y'all are in the same womb, which is mother earth. So like you're not technically separate. You're just not, you're just having less contact. That, if that makes sense. Now the oyster person, I feel like the oyster person is holding in a lot and probably not recognizing how um, maybe the Phoenix absence or lack of the Phoenix attention has maybe been making them feel. I definitely feel like the oyster is trying very hard not to jump to conclusions, which actually I feel like that's one thing I want to give both of you like credit for. I feel like both of you have been evolving how you relate to people, especially people you're romantically interested in. Um, I definitely feel like in the past, maybe both of you would be quick to jump to conclusions or shut down or run away or just go back into old ways of relating that are maybe just less mature and um, less aligned with the people that you are now. I feel like you both have grown and learned from your past experiences, whether with each other or with other people and recognizing where you both need to um, evolve and um, where you're both also figuring out like what it is you actually need, what what is important to you, what isn't. This is a huge process of like self-discovery and also um, personal development and growth, which I love to see. Now, I feel like the oyster is struggling a little bit because they're more so in the dark about what the phoenix is going through. And I do think that that is creating a lot of um, fear, panic, anxiety, overwhelm, overthinking. And I feel like the oyster person is trying really hard to suppress their emotions for the phoenix person. Here's something really sweet about the phoenix person. The phoenix person is fully recognizing the fact that um, the oyster is giving them space and they're very grateful for that. They feel very safe actually within the connection with the oyster because they feel like um, they can trust the oyster to speak up, which if you're the oyster person, we got to talk. Um, and they just kind of feel very safe and comfortable within this connection in the sense that they don't feel rushed. They don't feel like they need to explain themselves. And they also don't feel like the oyster person is putting any pressure on them, which they do appreciate. Now the oyster person, like I said, may be struggling a little bit with like jumping, jumping to conclusions about what um, the Phoenix person's silence means or what the Phoenix person is going through. So if you are the oyster person, I do want to assure you that like what the Phoenix person is going through is very much about themselves and has nothing to do with like their feelings for you or anything like that, which we'll look more deeply in the uh, tarot for that. But I also feel like the oyster person is maybe using self-deprecating humor as a coping mechanism. And uh, if you are the oyster person, I would I would like to politely ask you maybe to reconsider how helpful that is to yourself. Um, but I feel like if the oyster person is and the phoenix person are communicating right now, it's very much on the lighter side. The oyster person may be sending a lot of like funny memes or funny TikToks or reels or whatever. And just kind of staying on the lighter side of things, even though they may know there's a lot more going on with the phoenix, it just seems like the phoenix isn't ready to talk about it. Because when we look at the connecting energies between the two of you, it definitely seems like there's delays or things are at a standstill with Journey in Reverse. But the fact that we have Toth here with Wisdom, I feel like both of you are applying what you've already learned and also taking into consideration that this con connection matters to the both of you and that each other's feelings matter to the both of you. And so the way that you choose to behave with each other and communicate with each other matters as well. Like there's this real emphasis of not falling into like petty energies or like accusatory energies or energies where you allow your insecurities to cause either of you or both of you to act in ways that um, don't align with who you are anymore. I feel like the oyster person maybe if I could give the oyster person just a small piece of advice, I feel like the oyster person is not recognizing their own inner value. You know, what's inside of an oyster? A pearl. And I feel like these delays have been actually very significant in helping both of you evolve. It kind of seems like whatever distance or space or um, less frequent communication interaction has been going on, it seems like that's actually been really helpful for the both of you to get through some necessary like self-development things and also learn things about yourself that will be very useful for 
your romantic relationships and relationships in general. I feel like the oyster person is trying their best to stay on the lighter side of things, but I also feel like the oyster person is kind of making light of their emotions in certain ways where they might be kind of like trying not to embrace their emotions too much out of fear of getting hurt. You know, the oyster, they, they're kind of clammed up, so to speak, and they're a little bit reserved. But if you can see this like kind of shining light here, I feel like the oyster is not seeing um, their own growth in this process. The oyster might be a little bit more focused on the phoenix. I feel like the phoenix has been going through so much, like they don't have as much time to be focused on outside people, but that doesn't mean that the phoenix person hasn't been thinking about the oyster a lot. If anything, I think that the phoenix person has really been reflecting on their connection with the oyster and how the oyster has made them see the world differently and, and grow and how the oyster has change their perspective of themselves this is actually like i feel like both of these are really positive energies i think the hard thing is that the oyster is just more so in the dark and a little bit afraid to like open up about what they've been feeling and what they've been experiencing and maybe a little bit afraid to even acknowledge any insecurities or worries or fears around the connection i feel like the biggest thing that you need to know is that these delays slash like blockages um are very beneficial for the both of you and they're leading to a lot of wisdom for the both of you and i think your connection is going to evolve in a very positive way because of these kind of setbacks because you both are learning a lot about yourselves and, and how you communicate. I feel like the oyster could be a little bit more open. I feel like the oyster is almost kind of like holding back out of fear of bothering or pestering the phoenix, but I feel like they don't really need to worry about that too much. I also noticed that we have two like H words here and so the letter H could be significant. Um, but I definitely think that the oyster keeping things light is very beneficial for the phoenix right now because they are moving through a lot of heavy energies. But I also feel it's important for the oyster to know that they don't have to like hold everything back. Like the phoenix can hold space um, if the oyster is comfortable opening up more. I feel like there, there's there been a lack of communication around what you both are going through individually. And maybe you're not at that place yet to like talk about those things. But if you are and that is something you're comfortable with, I do feel like spirit might be saying, you know, um, to take like heed of what you've been um, going through, what you've been experiencing and how you can like communicate that better to the other person. Um, I definitely think that the Phoenix is having a lot of spiritual growth and the oyster person is having a lot of emotional growth and um, growth in terms of how they process those emotions and how they give themselves grace. Because I feel like the oyster person is very uncomfortable with certain emotions and they may be uncomfortable with their emotions towards the Phoenix person. But the, the big thing here is that um, the oyster person definitely has deeper feelings and maybe they let the phoenix person know and that's maybe because they don't want to like stress the phoenix person out or overwhelm them but i do feel like the oyster person may be denying their feelings a little bit or denying the insecurities that these delays have brought about for them with like self-deprecating humor or just with keeping things like which we all cope in different ways no judgment i just do think that if the oyster is struggling with self-deprecating humor or humor that um, puts them down, I just would recommend maybe being a little bit more conscientious of that because that's not fair to the oyster person if you are the oyster person. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get, if that resonates, this is gonna be a reading and we're gonna go ahead now and get into your tarot cards. So we are using the Edgar Allan Poe tarot. What's your favorite Edgar Allan Poe work i was like should i use story should i use poem whatever it is whatever what's his favorite piece of writing if you have one um just curious or what's your favorite Ele edgar Allan poe fact about the man himself i would love to hear um but while i'm shuffling as well i do just want to mention like the extended we are gonna it's gonna be a spicy one and it's gonna be really fun so if you haven't seen what's in it yet and you're interested after this is resonating please feel free to check that out uh because that's a great way to support me but a super free and helpful way of supporting me is just liking the video if you enjoy it commenting down below letting me know how it resonates and subscribing if you want to be part of our silly little fam Meh. sorry i'm not shuffling my paper right i also feel like i can feel some of you overthinking like well, if some people watching this are the Phoenix person and some people are watching and they're the Oyster person, like, how do I, how do we know that the, the, like, the perspective is coming from the right person? To be perfectly clear, we don't. That's why we take what resonates and let the rest, and not let the rest take from us. But 
that's where I just trust spirit and trust what what's coming through there because like I'm only half here as y'all know this comes through me not from me spiritual wisdom that is far beyond my my two brain cells it just comes through you know the ASO filter but just let go of that fear try to open your mind breathe breathe through it and just be open to the messages and if you're not finding the answers that that you were looking for in this reading try a different pile see if there's more in there but ultimately you know you can also try past videos as well but ultimately if you're meant to know something you will if you're not meant to know something you're not you won't at least until you're meant to know it which means then it will come to you but it's my hope that i hit as much information as possible and that's always my my goal my effort but or my goal and and i will do my best efforts to do that but if you want one that's like fully in depth i did do a you versus them what's going on with the connection like a little over a month ago anyway i'm gonna quit yapping and get into the cards now so i'm gonna get two cards for what your person is thinking about you two cards for what your person is feeling about you and two cards for what actions your person is going to take or is planning on taking so spirit what is pile one's person thinking about them okay so the fact that did you see how that card jumped like the fact that that jumped out so quickly i definitely think that you are on this person's mind um and i think probably like more frequently especially if they're a phoenix person like they're already preoccupied but they're definitely thinking about you oh yeah we have the knight of cubs <laughs> and we have the knight of swords okay yeah all right i'm already liking this okay what are pile one's person's feelings towards them at this time please spirit we have the four of cups and we have the chariot oh i love this so so much and finally what are their what actions are they most likely to take towards pile one in the near future we have the Queen of Swords. And we have the Four of Pentacles, which I love that because that's like, that's that's a held card. And on the back of the deck, we have the Wheel of Fortune. If you're like, what's the back of the deck? Usually I use it as a main idea, a hidden meaning. But yeah, the fact that we have the Wheel of Fortune back here, I want to start off by saying that it seems like the timing of how things are unfolding is outside of your control if you're watching this not when i'm uploading it but just at a, at a time in the future like if cancer season is coming soon which would be the end of june to mid slash late july um that could be a significant timing point but i'm uploading this like a little bit after cancer season so it doesn't have to be that could be when the moon is in cancer next as well um but i try not to get too focused with timing but let's go ahead and start with uh their thoughts about you because they're already thinking about action that they want to take towards you and I do feel like your person is really trying to ride this fine balance between like logic and emotion I feel like this person is acknowledging the fact that they have like very whimsical feelings oh and there's actually um oh, there are dates on this and I love my timing because guess what they are June 20th June 21st and June 22nd and they're all Sunday so a Sunday could be significant as well. Um, I assume this is related to a story. I haven't read posts since middle school, so <laughs> give me a break. I read intellectual things um, like Twilight. I know that's like more advanced than most of you understand, but like, you know, I'm a true intellectual. Anyway. <laughs> Um, this person is definitely thinking about actions that they want to take and they're thinking about like one your history together I also think that they're thinking about um, your differences in terms of where you differ emotionally and intellectually I feel like they are thinking about what actions they want to take and making sure that it's not too mushy-gushy or too like cold and icy and like logical if that makes sense I feel like this person is thinking about how they want to communicate their emotions to you and what they've been realizing as a result of these powerful emotions. So with the nine of cups here, I definitely feel like they are thinking about like what sort of offer or what sort of moves they want to make towards you. But with the knight of swords, they, they're thinking about 
I don't want to do it too hastily. If this person is known for being very impulsive, I feel like they're trying to scale that back a little bit. I think one thing that this person has gotten in trouble with is the, in the past is acting on impulse or acting on emotion and then that impulse or emotion changing very quickly and then they're like in a situation where they're like oh crap I actually don't know if I want this and it creates a lot of mess which is actually really interesting because you can see all this like dirt on the floor but I think this person is also recognizing that being too overtly like logical or cold or <laughs> sterile I don't know why that word's coming through may not express to you like the depths of their feelings I think that <laughs> I'm thinking of that meme that's like, I have two wolves inside me. Um, and I feel like this person is fighting between their emotional wolf and their, uh, I don't need anyone. I am, I'm alone or I'm afraid to express emotion and look like soft wolf. It's kind of like, if you've seen Wednesday, like they're, they're fighting between their inner Enid and their inner Wednesday. You know what I mean? Trying to find the balance between the two of those. They don't want to be too mushy gushy with you but they also don't want to like give you the impression that they're not interested in you in a romantic way because they do have feelings for you and they do want to express those just not in a way that that is like that makes them look weak or that makes them seem like they're jumping the gun they they really care about coming to you correctly and coming to you in a way that um that is worthy of you like they they don't want to give you something pile one i literally want to cry but i'm not going to we're gonna keep going um i finished your reading and realized that my camera died uh and who knows how long i was channeling for um but i was on a roll and it was a great reading and i'm really bummed about it but you know what when obstacles happen we just we just got to redo it and we got to keep moving so um we left off with me interpreting these, so I'm gonna interpret them again. I already have your channel messages pulled and as well as your guidance cards pulled because I did them because I thought my camera was recording it. My freaking, okay, listen, I need to like bitch for 10 seconds. This, this fucking bitch right here, this bitch right here, right? She's plugged in, right? But she wasn't plugged in all the way. And, and, my, and my camera died, like, I, I'm just like, of course but you know what it's fine we move on and I think it's very it kind of makes sense that it would happen here because it's like one big theme that I'm seeing in this connection let me let me sit back down I better get comfortable because I gotta repeat about half the reading well I don't need to repeat it I just need to who knows maybe maybe I'll get new insights or refine things in a way I don't know all I do know is is um, I wish that uh, I could make my charger uh, like anthropomorphize it, make it exist so that I could like fight it or at the very least be like, how dare you? How dare you? Like not let me know that you were plugged in all the way. But anyway, <laughs> I'll get over it. Point of what I was saying, the theme that I was getting for your reading was that there are, there seem to be delays, <laughs> delays, blockages very gruel of me, uh, Mean Girls reference. Uh, but that's not letting either of you stop that. You are continuing to persevere anyway. And what I'm really seeing here is your person, in terms of their thoughts, they're fighting between their emotions and they're fighting between their ego. And a big reason as to why that is, is because their ego is trying to protect them. Their ego is afraid of getting hurt. And their ego also has dealt with a lot of nonsense, a lot of BS, a lot of drama from the past, but they also don't want that to get in the way of their feelings for you. They're li quite literally fighting between their heart and their, um, their heart and their ego. I also feel like it's very important to them that they come correct towards you. Like they're literally thinking about the actions that they want to take. And they're also reflecting on their actions in general. Um, what is in alignment with them, what's no longer in alignment with them anymore. I also think they're trying to ride this fine balance between accurately expressing the depths of their feelings for you without scaring you or without um, coming across as like too intense. But I also think on the, on the other hand, uh, they're also very afraid of not expressing enough emotion and giving you the impression that they don't feel as much as they actually do. So there's a lot of overthinking here 
and like i said earlier like those two wolves like they are going to war inside this person's head and we actually have the channel messages that kind of confirm that so confirming these two cards we have how do i know you won't leave me like everyone else i don't know if the part that i channeled about them having abandonment wounds um came through but this confirmed that and we also have my ego wants to deny this connection but my soul won't let me i do feel like this person kind of wants to run away wants to um not acknowledge this connection or at the very least like I feel like this person, they don't wish they hadn't met you or anything, but I do think that this person is is just not enjoying the discomfort that comes with growth, but they're also very much, like, I feel like a part of them, like, is coming alive again, which would make sense given we have, like, either Oyster or Phoenix, where, um, like, the, their inner emotional world seems to be coming alive again, and I feel like there's more magic coming back into their life because of their connection with you. Now, moving on to their emotions, um, and I will say this this reading is going to look a bit differently because um, because I had already done it a full round, so I apologize. I'm kind of frustrated because I feel like I got so much, but hopefully I can get as much as I can and do it justice. Um, I guess shit happens. We got to keep moving forward, right? So with the Four of Cups here in the Chariot, first of all, Cancer energy all over. I think we pointed out one the day sunday could be significant we also had the days june 20th june 21st and june 22nd which is during cancer season i believe um or the start of cancer season the chariot is also ruled by cancer so cancerian energy is very significant here and i feel like you give off like mother vibes or this person like mother vibes are kind of evoked within them when they're around you like there's this just this very nurturing energy this very protective energy i feel like they're simultaneously being very protective of their heart but they feel very protective over you i also think with the four of cups here um the lack of movement between the two of you and um the lack of like interaction between the two of you whether that it's just like service level right now or whether it is just very on and off or whether it's just not happening right now i feel like this person is is very bored not having you in their life as much and also i feel like your influence has made their life a lot more boring i feel like with the chariot they they are excited about moving forward with you and i think that they see a bright and beautiful future and actually one thing i'm noticing is how similar this phoenix is to like this image up here so whether you're the phoenix or they're the phoenix i definitely feel like they see a bright future with you and i think that they are excited for forward movement and the chariot also makes me think of themes like victory and i think that um your person is likely in therapy or getting counseling from someone that they trust uh to kind of work through you know the issues that they're dealing with when it comes to opening up to you when it comes to the fears of being open i also think with the four of cups here your person might be kind of overcomplicating things just out of fear that they're going to do something wrong or they're going to say something wrong or that things are going to all go to crap but really more than anything i feel like your person is trying to on their own be a more balanced person so that they can show up as a more balanced person for you I also think with this four of cups here like this person is really frustrated by this kind of limbo slash standstill you both are in but it's like they're not sure how to move forward yet and their actions kind of get into that and and we'll get there but um it definitely seems like they they really want to move forward with you they have feelings for you but I also think that there is a part of them that's very afraid of that and very afraid of um like they're wondering if they're ready but also I think that they know that they're ready. It's almost like they just kind of need the encouragement to be kind of pushed out the nest. I guess I guess help is coming the way, the way it is meant to. Um, but I feel like there's more with the chariot. This is why I hate when this happens. Cause like you can never fully replicate like what you're what i'm doing because or i mean i can never fully replicate like any reading because you know it, it just flows authentically but i hope i hope i'm i hope i'm doing it justice again i feel like really more than anything though this person is learning how to grow how to mature how to evolve i also think with the chariot here like they not only want to move forward with you but i think they're recognizing like the sense of home that they feel with you you know the chariot cancer energy is not just like Cancer energy also, uh, the fourth house is ruled by cancer. Or the fourth house represents like Cancerian energy, like themes of home, family. 
And I think that this person does feel that with you. And maybe there is this sense of like, maybe like, they might like want you to meet their family. We'll get there. Um, or they might see you as like family. You may feel like home to them. I feel like there is this, there is this level of intimacy with you that's like intuitive almost. It's like walls and barriers that they had um, around other people or that they developed to protect themselves from being hurt um, like they had been in the past, like those are being broken down. And the biggest thing, big thing that I'm noticing as well is that we have two fours here. Those are the only numbers. Um, and actually all the numbers here, we have two, we have 10, we have fours. All of those numbers are even numbers, they're balanced. So it seems like this person and four specifically are a number of stability, of security. And I, I definitely feel like your person is really focused on moving beyond um, their emotional baggage and moving beyond their discomfort of being open to something deeper with you or something more committed. Cause like, like I said, you could be with this person, but maybe you guys are just on different pages. Maybe this is like long distance. And so it's harder to see one another. Um, whatever the situation is between the two of you, I definitely feel like your person is trying to get themselves in a position where they're prepared to dive more deeply into this connection with you without falling into the same traps that they have in the past. So with that being said, I want to show you the channeled messages that we that we pulled. Um, let me make sure. Okay, okay, it's recording. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna be like impulsively checking the camera every single time now. So the first one that came out was, I'm satisfied with living a surface level experience right now. Please respect that. But that's not the full truth. Because we also have, I feel so confident with you by my side and I want to save you from your problems. So this person, so one of the patterns that I think they're working through either in therapy or with someone they trust is this desire to live a surface level experience. Cause let's be honest, you wouldn't be connecting with this person if they were solely surface level. Their desire to live a surface level experience does not come from, uh, does not come from a genuine authentic desire to do that. It's, it comes from the desire to not put themselves in situations where they could potentially be hurt emotionally. The fact that they feel so good and confident with you by their side is something that um, feels great to them. But I also think they're recognizing that they need to feel that way on their own. They can't rely on someone to make them only make them feel that way. And I think one thing that they're also aware of is the fact that they have this tendency when they do let someone into their lives to be very sacrificial and selfless. And th those are wonderful qualities, but it can be codependent and it can also your person can kind of turn into a martyr. And I feel like they recognize that that's not healthy and that's not appropriate and that a healthy relationship should be one where there is an us, but there is still both of you as separate individuals. Like this person is needing to learn how to have their own individuality. And I think, so there's kind of this cycle that I was talking about, like you would know about it. You're like, Asa, this is the first time I'm seeing this. I'm like, well, it's the second time I'm saying it. <laughs> um, so sorry if my communication, it's almost like I'm like clarifying with myself, like recalling things, but also I feel like I'm explaining my process to you a lot. And I don't know if that's because maybe that's something you're desiring from your person or that your person wants to do, wants to explain to you, but it's like they kind of have to understand their process before they can express it to you and before they can act in ways that are more alignment with what they've learned about this process but i feel like there, there's kind of this this cycle right now that this person's going through where it's like they love like being around you knowing you connecting with you has brought a part of them back to life um not to get all evanescence with it but like li quite literally a part of them that they were suppressing and had been kind of disconnected from the more emotional parts of themselves the more sentimental the more hopeful the more cheerful like magical parts of themselves are being reignited and they're kind of fighting their ego's desire to stay on the surface because it's safe there because it's it's easy there it's it may not be interesting it may be kind of boring which we kind of see in that four of cups but at least i'm not um treading in open waters or treading in territory i'm i feel uncomfortable with but there's this acknowledgement of you know they really trust you pile one like they feel confident with you but i feel like their wounds they don't want to project wounds from past relationships onto you and they also don't want you to like they don't want that to be something that like gets in the way of your ability to connect like for example if 
you know, they're feeling really insecure about you just like ghosting them and running away. They don't want to be like bringing that up to me. Like, I'm just afraid you're going to ghost me or I'm just afraid of this because so-and-so did this to me in the past. Like, they don't want you to think that you're comparing them to past people or that you are assuming they're going to do the same thing. I feel like they want to be in a position where they are, they're trying to get in a position where they're going to be comfortable enough with the vulnerability that it requires to be emotionally intimate with someone and, um, and the vulnerability it requires to like just be connected to someone in a serious way without um without falling into the same traps as before without falling into old patterns it's like they want to be able to be the the version of themselves that was open to love open to connection in the first place but not be the version of themselves that allowed them to you know just willingly uh accept red flags or accept a uh, behavior that is unhealthy or unfair to their partner or to themselves and i also think that they're recognizing like they could have this complex where they want to save people and um i feel like they're recognizing like how unhealthy that is and, and the fact that um they not only need to be confident in themselves but they need to be confident in their in in the recognition that while they can help you and that they can support you they can't like fix your problems for you. And I feel like they're learning how to be a more healthy support system rather than, you know, a, a, a superhero or someone that, that saves you from everything. Does that make sense? But moving into their actions. So their actions were very specific. So this Queen of Swords could represent someone. And if it is a person, I think it is someone that you both like have like a mutual, they're either like a mutual friend or someone you mutually know or someone with a lot of wisdom that they trust. I feel like they're going to be consulting them about what to do, or they could be, especially if this is a mutual friend or someone that knows you, they could be consulting them about what the best move is towards you. What, um, how can I make sure pile one knows like I'm not going anywhere? Cause here's the biggest thing. Like, I know I'm going back to the camera thing, which like get over the camera thing. I'm like, you know how frustrating it is? You know you know when you play a video game for like six hours or something and you work so hard and then the video game turns off and then you realize or it shuts off or like it freezes and it reboots and you lose everything that you did because you forgot to save it? You know how like it just kills your motivation to want to like keep going? I didn't have that. I was like, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to finish this reading. And I feel like that that energy, which first of all, part of that is my my own like or I'm not gonna let technological challenges get in the way, but also I feel like your person is like not letting any blockages get in their way. It's like they know that um, they can't run away from the situation. They don't have any desire to. It's only their fears that are making them feel like they want to. It's it's just those fears of abandonment. It's like, well, if I don't if I don't open myself up to anything, then I can't be abandoned. But what they're realizing is like, well, they're abandoning themselves in that way because they're not allowing themselves to be connected with other people human beings are social creatures. We're meant for connection and intimate connection with someone you love. It's like one of the most powerful and special ways of experiencing love and connection in a human body. And I feel like they're recognizing that and that they need to be open to that. So first of all, if this is a long distance thing, well, I, th I, I don't know if I finished my thought, but essentially the fact that I just felt so determined, like, no, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do this anyway. That's how your person feels about like the blockages. Um, and the setbacks and this connection. It's like, no, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep moving forward. And I also feel like they're utilizing any setbacks in their favor to like gain wisdom. So one of them could be the fact that like you could be at a distance from one another. And this person I do think is either dealing with some sort of financial financial issues or they're like trying to improve their financial situation. Um, or they are, um, wait. Let me stop. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so if this is a long distance thing, or if you're not able to see one another as often as you'd like, I feel like your person is trying to improve their financial situation or improve um, their material situation in a way that allows you to see one another more. But I also think with the Four of Pentacles, like the typical Four of Pentacles, there's someone like quite literally holding on to all of their pentacles. And I think that this is definitely a sign that this person is not going anywhere. Like they're not planning on running away from this connection. Like I definitely think that they're very sure and very set on wanting to move things forward with you. They just 
don't know how to communicate things with you and i also think there's just a lot of fears about being open and honest about what they're they've been going through i feel like they don't want to look weak and i also think with actions here if you kind of resonate with queen of swords energy i do think that your person could be kind of hoping that you'll instigate that conversation you know the um that like trope in movies where um or tv shows movies whatever where a character is like why didn't you tell me something and then the other character is like well you didn't ask like i feel like this person is kind of hoping you will ask them the right questions so that they can give you the right answers so if you feel called to like like ask them more deeply they may not give you everything quite yet they may not be as expressive as you'd like but if you feel called to um start instigating certain questions feel free to do so i feel like there is a part of them that's maybe kind of hoping you will but if not i feel like they're getting um guidance from someone who uh has their best interests at heart and also has like a more um compassionate but logical approach someone who's kind of detached from the situation where they just want the best for your person they just want your person to be happy and if you are what makes your person happy if you are what your person wants like they're determined to help your person with that they want to help them with that i feel like with the queen of swords as well the fact that we have the knight of swords and the queen of swords here i feel like your person is trying to communicate what they've been going through and what they've been dealing with in a way that is clear in a way that is mature but also that isn't cold they want to communicate in a way that that expresses the truth of what's been going on with them but like also make it clear that it has nothing to do with you or make it clear like where it's their problems where it's their um their things that they're working on i feel like they're very focused on figuring out how to be better at communicating and also how to communicate in ways that um will help you both get on the same page i definitely think they they care a lot about saying things in the right way saying things which i think maybe even being focused on saying things in the right way is part of the problem i feel like they're they're like i've already said they're definitely overthinking things and i also think with the four of pentacles here they are holding back a little bit but i feel like that's because they want to get their thoughts in order and when they do like open up to you about everything i feel like it's going to be very succinct it's going to be very um detailed in depth like i feel like that like it's like they almost want to get all their ducks in a row so that they can like present you everything rather than just tell you what's going on when they don't have succinct answers or a succinct truth yet but I definitely think that um, if you have been a little bit more distant or a little bit um, more reserved with this person, they've noticed. And I think they're also they're also kind of mirroring that a little bit because there's also fear. I, I kind of feel like there's a bit of a standoff here between the two of you. And it's not because like you want to hurt the other. It's because both of you are afraid of being hurt and both of you have emotional investment in this connection. And I think both of you are afraid of the emotional investment you have. It's almost like you don't want to get your hopes up, but you also don't want to let go of the situation um and i was saying earlier uh from i was thinking of a quote from the drag queen katya insert long russian last name here uh expectations are premeditated resentments which on the back of the deck we had our love transcends time and space don't box it in with human distortions and expectations so that was a moment that got me really excited in the original reading uh, that you'll never see but uh i wanted you to know that because i do think that um one of the worst things that you both could do to one another is jump to conclusions make assumptions about how the other person feels like i feel like more than anything um it's so important to not let that desire get in the way of your ability to connect because i think both of you are very sensitive about um pat painful past experiences and i think that's a lot of what you both are healing from with that wisdom here i feel like both of you have been growing beyond that and neither of you want to fall back into old patterns so speaking of more actions we have i want you to meet my family which is why i was like <laughs> we'll see that um so this queen of swords could be a family member that um maybe this person really wants to show you um see how you mesh with their family or see what their family thinks of you maybe that is like kind of the the next stage of like commitment or the next step for you guys and that's something that's a little scary i feel like your person is holding back a little bit but that's only because like they're afraid of telling you the truth authenticity scares me i keep my mask on at all times and i feel like you see through that mask and that's probably a big reason as to why you both were drawn to each other in the first place i feel like both of you one have share a lot of common past experiences and maybe that's something you've bonded over but i also think this person knows that like they can't lie to you they can't 
they can't put up a front with you and that's very freeing and they love that but at the same time it scares the crap out of them so it's like they really want to come correct and if they're worried that they can't it's like they're holding back and moving through you know the, the cycles of emotions the processes that they're going through so that they can show up correct but we also have my heart is yours and i really do believe that like i feel like this person only has feelings for you i feel like this person like if there was if there were to be a quote unquote third party it would literally like the third party would be this person's ego and like the fear of um I, well this person's afraid both ways they're afraid of being open and vulnerable with you but they're also afraid of letting their ego win and and shutting down and letting go of a good thing i.e you because of their own fear and so and they know that would be silly and they know that's not right and so i feel like that's why this person has been growing and evolving so much i wouldn't be surprised if for a lot of you your person is the phoenix person but maybe you both are going through these similar transformations together but with that being said let's look at the guidance that miss megadeck um so gracefully shuffled for y'all we have maturity. I make peace with the tough relationships of my past. I probably would have skipped the pain they came with, but I'm grateful for the lessons they brought me. Because of those tough relationships, I can look back at the mosaic of my life, i.e. internet stalk my exes, and see the value in even the most broken pieces. I really dodged a bullet. Yeah, which I feel like this just really shows how the both of you are working on, you know, maturing, growing, and not letting your past pains get in the way of your ability to connect. I also feel like the both of you are doing a wonderful job at like not comparing each other to your past um, and recognizing where um, you still have unhealed wounds around past people and, and learning how to soothe those and heal those so that they don't become an issue in, in this relationship. But we also have warmth. I focus on warmth and let it guide all my interactions. No matter how others behave, I choose to respond warmly. With warmth, I can melt any icy exterior. I can soften any hard feelings. I can microwave any pizza. Today, I adopt the saying, kill him with kindness, and turn myself into a warm, loving serial killer. We love that. <laughs> we also have everyone's a teacher. Everyone I cross paths with is a teacher in that moment. The ones who give me the fun lessons are the ones I call friends. The ones who give me hard lessons I sometimes call a-holes. They've chosen a tough job, but someone's got to do it. So today I'm thanking all the a-holes. Thank you, a-holes, for playing your part in making me a better person. And I definitely think it's like both of you are healing from the a-holes that are teaching you maturity and teaching you how to be more open and, and not be icy and push people away. But... That doesn't mean it's not hard. Connection is a scary thing and being vulnerable is a scary thing. And I feel like you both really need to give yourselves credit for how far you've come and, and the fact that like, even though this is a scary situation, you're not allowing it to stop either of you from pursuing things further. We also have perseverance, <laughs> speaking of. It seems you're on a massive journey right now, and this card has arrived to remind you that you will reach the other side. The mountain you're climbing is huge and formidable, but so is your ability to climb it. You don't need to enjoy it, you just need to tackle it. Complain if it makes the job easier. L like how I did, like how I did, like for half your reading. So see, even I do it, we all do it. Blow off some steam. You think mountain climbers get to the top of Everest on inspirational quotes? No way, they're grunting, crying, and cursing like freaking pirates. I do all those too. That just doesn't sell a lot of posters. So I feel like it's unfair to not give you a glimpse of Miss Megadeck. So um, we're gonna have to, to give Almighty Megadeck the opportunity to give you some more guidance because I can't just like not let you, not let y'all get some get some Megadeck action. So Miss Megadeck, oh wise and powerful and mighty Megadeck, what final guidance would you like to leave pile one with at this time before we go to the spicy extended? Megadeck has spoken. <sighs> I love this. Communication. Wonder how the other person's feeling? Ask them. Wish they knew how you were feeling? Tell them. You've just been drafted into the communication army where there is a strict do ask, do tell policy. Speak with kindness and gentleness and warmth and reach an understanding. If you don't, assumption will just make asses of everyone, including the person who came up with that a a aphorism i don't know if i said that right but i love i love that mega deck gave us a little bit because like i was like freaking out the whole reading because your cards were just really matching what i was channeling and it was just confirming what i was saying but you know at least i got a little bit of it and i'm glad y'all got some mega deck action 
But with that being said, I'm gonna head over to the extended now. So if you wanna get spicy, check me out over there. But if you're leaving me here, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. And thank you so much for letting my ads play in the background while you do something else. That is one of the simplest and easiest ways to support me and my channel and show appreciation for what I do. But if you would like to do that in other ways, like I said earlier, you can like, comment, subscribe, let me know how it resonates. Um, Shout out to my notification squad. Be sure to click that little bell if you want to be part of my notification squad. If you want to see, um, if you want me to see your comment, I usually see comments when I first upload. After that, it's very iffy because uh, I try not to look at that too much, you know, for my own mental health. But um, if you'd like to support me in other ways or listen to me burp, <laughs> you can uh, also check out my candles. Be sure to use code ASO10 for 10% off. The link. They'll be linked down below. You can check out my merch. You can check out my social media, which is basically just Instagram. And you can check out my ass. No, you really can't, but I don't think I have anything else to say. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna leave this reading here, pile one. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and for letting me read for you. I love you guys so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. I hope this reading, I hope this reading brought you clarity. I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Green Aventurine Angel and the Dark Wood Tarot, this is going to be your reading on how your person is currently feeling about you. So to make sure we're even channeling you and your person, we're going to start with an energy check and see where the situation is at. If you want a full breakdown of the reading, there is one in the intro. Um, if this part does not resonate, then this is not the reading for you. It's absolutely okay if you see yourself on both sides, but we're gonna start with, that's often indicative of mirroring, but we're gonna start with person A's energies and they are showing up as the vulture and patience. The connecting energies between the two of you are the door to personal healing and happiness and Atten with light. And then person B is, <laughs> I love that, the B. <sighs> I'm gonna try not to make too many puns, but person B will be <laughs> the B. <laughs> that makes me so happy. And their other energy is seek. So person A is going, I'm going to call them the vulture and person B is the B. So it seems like right off the bat, um, a big thing that I'm getting here is that you guys are definitely not on the same page at least it, appear, it appears to be that way. It seems like the B is investing a lot more energy or a lot more thought and energy into the connection right now than the vulture person is. But what the B is not seeing is that the vulture is deliberately kind of sequestering themselves off from the B because there's things that they need to take care of that they don't want the B to have to deal with or be involved in. The biggest thing with the connecting energies that I'm seeing here is that this connection is headed to a positive place. So no matter um, what your connection status is with this person, because it could honestly be all over the board. Like this could be someone that you're just friends with. This could be a situation ship. This could be someone you're in a long-term relationship with and things have kind of been off. The connection is headed in a positive and brighter, lighter direction, but there's an important key word here and that is personal. And the fact that it's personal healing and happiness, I feel like the both of you are focusing heavily on your individual journeys. And I think that the B is much more, um, is either further ahead in their healing journey or um, much more aligned with where they need to be in order to kind of walk through these doors to personal healing and happiness and kind of access um, more of that healing, happiness, light, etc. I also feel like the B person is someone who's just so sweet and considerate and sensitive. And I feel like the B person may be overthinking or worrying about um, the vulture kind of the vulture could be talking to the bee less, they could just be more unavailable, or the bee could have even just noticed like energetically, it seems like the vulture is holding back more, um, or the vulture's energy has kind of shifted. And the thing is, is that 
the vulture is definitely being misunderstood in this situation but make no mistake that what they're doing right now is incredibly important um if you were the vulture person i definitely would not be surprised if maybe you're feeling a bit a bit of guilt around um needing to kind of take more time and space to yourself but essentially the vibe that i'm getting from the vulture person is that they're doing a lot of necessary inner work and tying up loose ends and letting go and releasing things that need to leave their life right now and that is a very important component for them to be able to quite literally walk through the door to personal healing and happiness i feel like the vulture person is in a process of rebalance and they're also recognizing that we're, whatever the B is ready for, they are not ready for yet. So for example, maybe if you and your person are dating, but maybe the B person wants to move in together and the vulture person wants that, but is not ready for that for whatever reason, they could be doing the necessary work to get there or do the, be doing the necessary work to see what within them needs healing so that they see why they might be averse to it or it could have to do with um financial reasons anything like that it seems like there are issues in the vulture's life that do not concern the bee that they either will tell the bee about at a later time or um that they may have just like shame around and it's like they kind of want to address that before they kind of open themselves up more to the B person. I feel like the B person was ready yesterday <laughs> to move things forward or to um, progress the connection here. I feel like the B person knows intuitively that the vulture person like isn't going anywhere, but they may be, be <laughs> anytime I say the word B, I'm gonna be like B. <laughs> um, the B person may be feeling more lonely or more isolated, especially with that like bubble around them. And it seems like the bee is doing a great job of just trying their best to focus on what does matter, not jump to conclusions, focusing on the light side of things and keeping things light. Um, and I feel encouraged to say like, if you are the bee person, don't stop doing that because um, not only is it helping, but also it would only it would only do you a disservice to be like jumping to conclusions whatever the vulture person is telling the bee person they're telling the truth but it may be very vague which is leading the bee person to overthink the fact that both of you are air signs or are showing up as air signs you could both be air signs gemini libra aquarius or um you both could just be thinking um, well this was the actual interpretation it's just astrology came in um it seems like you both are heavily on one another's mind and it seems like the primary form of interaction is communication whether that be text or in person etc and it seems like the both of you are in more of a like more in your heads about this situation i feel like the vulture person is dealing with a lot of insecurities around their worthiness of the b person this is actually really cute but the vulture person sees the bee person as like a really beautiful light and kind of as like their light. I feel like the, especially because the vulture person is shrouded in so much darkness. I feel like one thing that the bee may not recognize is that because the, the bee is the light for the vulture person, right? That light is bringing light to areas of darkness that the vulture was previously unaware of. So an example of this could be let's say the b person is very like open with their emotions or at the very least like very expressive of their emotions like if they need to cry they cry you know if they if just whatever that may be right well in that situation the vulture person might really like or be surprised by the bee's bursts of emotion and the vulture person may look at emotion in a way that they didn't before and then look at how they process their emo emotions and express their emotions and be like hmm why don't i do things that way or why am i uncomfortable with the bee person being more emotive or why do i know it's okay for the bee person to express their emotions but then when it comes to me i 
I feel guilt and shame around it. It's like, I, that's a weird complex example but it's the best I, I can come up with. Essentially, anything, like, the B person may have no idea what these things are and may have no idea that they're inspiring and invoking so much awareness within the vulture, but it's like the B holds up this mirror to the vulture where they see where they can improve where they can become a better person and I think the bee is, is a huge inspiration to the vulture person like they want to be on the bee's level and I think that um they know that in order to get there they have to work on themselves and they have to work on their own healing and I feel like there are elements to like the vulture's healing that isn't necessary for the bee to be around for and that it might actually create more um it might create unnecessary stress or create unnecessary chaos in in the bees energy so i feel like there's there's i feel like there's a divine aspect to this where um the both of you are kind of i wouldn't call it like separated but the both of you are less in sync because you both are meant to be more focused on your personal journeys right now. I feel like the hardest thing for the bee is that they're not seeing what's really going on with the vulture because they're probably, if I'm being honest, the vulture is probably not doing a great job at communicating to the bee like what's going on. And, and to be fair to the vulture, like they may have a hard time communicating these things or they might may want to wait until they've kind of reached a conclusion before they explain to the bee what they've been dealing with. But I feel like the bee is like having a hard time with this lack of clarity. And the fact that we have seek here, it's like, I feel like the bee is looking for answers and looking for reassurance, which hello, hi, glad that found you here if you're the bee. Um, and I feel like the bee is just working really hard on looking at the bright side of things, looking at the light side of things. And I feel like one thing that the bee person needs to know is, is that you may not understand why the vulture person is doing what they're doing. Like why they might, why they might be less communicative, why they might be more removed. Obviously if you're watching this and like the person I'm talking about is like doing shady things or something like that, um, that's a different story, but I'm not picking up on shady things from the vulture person. I'm picking up on like them acting shady because they're ashamed of their own like issues that they're that they need to work through and so it's kind of like they're they're definitely pushing the bee out a little bit but that's only because they don't they don't want to lash out at the bee or act towards the bee in a way that like isn't aligned with how they truly feel about the bee does that make sense because how they truly feel about the bee is that they they want to be worthy of the bee and i think that right now the vulture person is even working on that idea of self-worth and i think that the bee person has been a huge inspiration for the vulture in the sense that the vulture person is seeing the bee as living proof of I can do more than I, I thought I could. I can heal, I can grow, I can evolve. I can become a bigger, better, more mature person. And what the bee is not seeing is that, the, the bee might be placing the vulture on a pedestal because the vulture is definitely doing that to the bee. And I think they're trying to work through that. Um, but what the bee person may not be seeing is like, they might be assuming that the vulture like, the vulture like kind of taking their energy back, kind of being less um, active in the connection, being less dynamic towards progressing the connection, being less communicative as a sign that the vulture is losing interest or not interested in them. But I, I definitely feel like the vulture is just needing time to work through all of this like healing and rebalancing and that's going on in their lives. And I feel like the the vulture is a very important representative of person A because they might be feeling a little misunderstood and they might also be feeling like fear around the sense of like the B person not understanding why they need this space, the B person getting fed up with them. But I feel like they're just trying to trust and see things through. I feel like more than anything though, the fact that we have light and door to personal healing and happiness, the more you focus on that and also the the more you, you look at like the light side of this connection, the light side of things and not get sucked into negative like mindsets or things like that about, um, about the connection and about what the other person might be doing, 
the easier this cycle is going to go because I feel like this there's just kind of this huge emphasis right now on the both of you um learning how to regulate and also just like being catalysts for one another's growth and I think that in the case of the bee a lot of this growth has to do with continuing to stay in the light in a way where you're focusing on your own healing you're staying in your own lane but also making sure that you're not um allowing someone else's behavior to cause you if you're the bee or cause them if they're the bee cause themselves to like spiral or or get sucked back into like negative patterns of thinking or negative patterns of behaving so I feel like for the B person, it's a lot about maintenance and a lot about um, learning to be okay with uncertainties and learning to be okay with doing whatever the B wants to do, doing living the B's life, if you will, with the knowing that things are still up in the air and there's uncertainty. The B is learning how to be comfortable in in, in uncertainty and find peace in that whereas I feel like the vulture has this very clear idea of like I'm going into the light I am like I want to head in the same direction as the bee and in order to get there it's like I need to clear the path like I'm literally seeing um, a, a vision of not Beauty and the Beast Sleeping Beauty um, the Disney movie where Pr Prince Philip is that his name he's like cutting through all of these like thorns and weeds um that have been set up like after Melissa Maleficent does like her you know slay evil baddie stuff and like she grows a bunch of like thorns and stuff to keep Prince Philly out so he's like cutting those down and that, that was kind of the vision I was getting for the vulture just in the sense that the vulture person seems to be like cutting down a lot of what what has been keeping them separate from others, what has been keeping them from growing, what has been keeping them from healing. And I feel like their biggest thing is that they may be worried they're being misunderstood or they may be worried that, um, they may be worried about how these changes are affecting people outside of their lives, but that's really not very relevant. So I'm gonna kind of leave that where it is and I'm gonna go ahead and get into your tarot now. So if that resonates, well, I do wanna summarize again by saying like things seem to be headed in a positive direction. It seems like the bee just needs to stay focused on the light and focused on that positive direction. And the vulture person just needs to continue focusing on what they need to release, let go of, heal, rebalance, purify in order to, to be on that same path. These are really positive energies. So. I'm just gonna, yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay, right, all right. So while I'm shuffling, I did quick, quickly just want to mention uh, that there is an extended for this reading and it is spicy, 18 plus. So if you're interested in that, that will be linked down below. Haven't done a spicy one in a while, so feel free to join me there. But, that being said, I feel like this is this is actually a really cool deck that you chose because um, this is one of the decks that has interpretations for both light and shadow aspects of each card. And, and the story itself is really interesting. Obviously, it's called the Dark Wood Tarot, but the main protagonist kind of goes through the tarot and um, the all the cards kind of represent like aspects of the dark wood and I don't know it's it's a very it's a very interesting deck and I can almost see you and your person following this um personal journey on your own um I feel like especially for your person that might be really where they're at right now but I'm gonna pull two cards for their for what they're thinking about you, what they're feeling about you, and actions that they are planning on taking towards you. So, Spirit, Pile 2's person, what are they thinking about when, when it comes to Pile 2, please? The Three of Pentacles, what are they thinking about when it comes to Pile 2? The Two of Cups, all. These horses remind me of Shadow Mirror in Skyrim. Uh, what is pile two's person feeling for pile two 
We have the Queen of Swords, how to use person, and we have Justice. And then finally, what action is Pile of 2's person planning on taking? We have Judgment. And the Three of Cups. Okay. Alrighty. I really like these energies, actually. So. Oh, I just got like a stabbing pain in my back and I can't help but notice there's two threes here so one thing that this person might be doing is if they were in a relationship when you met or for example like in a marriage or something like that they could be through going through the process of like ending that um that's a very specific message but I feel like for some of you this person may have been holding back on progressing things forward with you because there could have been someone that they've been still been involved with in the past and like that that either backstabbed them or that um that they feel like they would be backstabbing if if they move things forward with you and but we'll get there but i feel like they know that that's what something more is is what they want with you but they're a like and so I think that's part of what this rebalancing is about is like learning to be okay to disappoint people. And I feel like there's a huge like recognition here of the fact that um, they feel like they can grow with you in a way that whatever this past person, and it could be a situation, like it just feels like they've been, they've been dealing with some sort of backstabbing because I've never felt like a stabbing pain like that in my back. Um, at least like that in this context we all got back problems but like <laughs> that was a bit different so in terms of their thoughts they definitely see a beautiful loving harmonious connection with you and i feel like i just heard two sides of the same coin they're thinking a lot about the fact that you both go really well together and you both flow really well together and it just they feel like they're understood with you. And with the Three of Pentacles, I think they're thinking a lot about how they can make this work between the two of you. They're also thinking about what they need to do to get there. It, it's quite literally, how can I make this work so that I can have this Two of Cups situation with, um, with Pile Two. Now, if you're already in a relationship with this person and this is like a situation where this person has been kind of like distant, they're definitely thinking about the fact that like, like they're consciously making the choice to be more distant because they want to either get back to this Two of Cups energy or build upon what you already have and they know that they need to improve themselves a little bit to get there. I definitely think they're thinking a lot about how they can be more open and transparent with you about what they've been going through. Because actually, and I wanna move into feelings because this kind of goes into feelings as well, they know that, they, that that it's not fair to you for them to keep you as much in the dark as they have about what they've been going through. And so I feel like they're trying to build themselves up to be able to effectively communicate what they're working through, what they're healing. And they may even be thinking about what they want to ask your help or your guidance on. There's definitely a huge focus here of them recognizing like, I'm probably, I'm not doing pile two justice, at least in terms of like, what I can offer them or what I can share with them, what I'm going through. And also I feel like they, if you're not in a relationship with them already, they haven't told you that they see you in a serious way. I definitely think as well with their feelings being the queen of swords and justice, I feel like not only do they want to do right by you, but they really appreciate how cool you've been about everything. Like this, with this queen of swords energy, they've really appreciated how you've checked in on them even when they've been kind of like removed and they also really appreciate the fact that you haven't um well the only pardon my french but the only phrase that i i'm getting is you haven't given them shit about you know their their lack of reciprocity at times they do notice that you have been more like reserved emotionally and have been more like been more uh cool with them 
but they don't but they understand that because it's like th that's kind of the energy they're getting and they're recognizing that they're giving that back to you the fact that we have justice here really goes to show that they they want to be able to give as much to this connection as you are and they also understand that like however you're behaving towards them like it's something that they understand and have to accept i feel like in their case though they really do want something more with you the fact that we have the justice card here you know the justice card can often talk about like contracts and things like that so they may be so that could be like commitment for example that could be signing a lease that could be like so many different things and i feel like they are really appreciating your ability to navigate your situation in a way that isn't putting pressure on them or making them feel like they have to rush their own like process if that makes sense an example I'm getting is like if you and them want to move in together and they want to do that but they're not like there yet financially rather than like pressuring this person to get a new job or like asking this person all the time like you know how they're doing and like things like that you you it seems like you kind of just like instead of pressing the topic you just kind of take a step back and like take their answer as it is and and not push it forward i feel like as well there's a real emphasis on wanting to do right by you and i, I think there's a real fear of disappointing you or not doing justice by you because I feel like they know you would cut them off or you would like push them away entirely and they don't want that to happen they really care and they really it's like they're working on themselves so that they can you know be in this balance two of cups energy now in terms of their actions with judgment and the three of cups I do feel like they will one be reaching out to you and two they might be inviting you somewhere like to quite literally like party or something like that um but i feel like for a lot of you this is literally just reaching out to reunite or finally telling you like not only what's been going on but they want to either feel connected and close to you or re-establish that feeling of connection and closeness it's like they know that they've been the ones to distance themselves like pull back and they want things to feel harmonious and joyful and good again the fact that we have judgment here that is a huge card of transformation and transformation that one cannot go back from um and actually it's very interesting that the three of cups is here because uh do i have that book with me because if i do i will just read it i don't think so um in another deck that i'm using in this video the tarot and wonderland deck they describe in that guidebook judgment as being something that well in the in the drawing it depicts 2d like flat cards becoming 3d becoming adding a whole dimension to things and i feel like for your person they're undergoing intense transformation that is going to take them to the next level essentially and be able to meet you with where you're at and it won't be such a reach or it won't be so it will be effortless it won't be something that this person worries about because i feel like one of the reasons why this person has held back so much um with you has been because they want to be what you deserve and they also don't want to give you anything less than you deserve i think that there's there's this pride around wanting to be an equal partner not wanting to be um in this situation where they're having to hide the fact that they feel insecure by you or that they put you on a pedestal like they want to feel at one with you they don't want to feel like your barbie and they're just kin which obviously that's an okay thing to be but i feel like <laughs> to be but i feel like they want they 
they see you both as like you, you both have Barbie energy essentially and it's like you're kind of meant to be a power couple in that way and I feel like right now the vulture person knows that like they don't have enough to give you and they just want to be able to give you what you deserve and what you give them because you've already given them gifts that they'll never be able to repay you like insights and awareness about their life um i feel like conversations with you are very healing and i think that one thing that they've just been very impressed by is your ability to remain cool in the face of challenging conversations or difficult situations i feel like this person is also recognizing that they they don't really know where you stand um in the sense that they might be kind of sweating by the fact that maybe you don't interact with them very often since they've kind of uh, pull their energy back and so they might be like whoa like just is pile two not really that into me anyway like are they realizing like I'm not good enough like there's definitely this real emphasis on them kind of questioning and overthinking things about themselves about their worth and and so there's just a lot going on right now with your person pile two where they need to work through some things that they are already working through and it's not your job to have to deal with that and although it may be frustrating to be kind of in the dark you will get clarity on everything happening especially with judgment in the three of cups like i definitely think that there is some sort of transformation happening right now with your person where they're gonna have a moment where things start to click and they're i i feel like they're not going to be able to wait or hold back with what they want to share with you i definitely think that this energy will shift like things will you'll both be feeling more connected you'll be feeling more joyful more just like things will flow more harmoniously again um when this person has some sort of like important realization or some sort of moment where everything that they've been working through clicks and it's like the doors to personal healing and happiness open and now they can rejoice with you if that makes sense i actually think this is really beautiful energy but we're gonna clarify um these cards with my handmade channeled messages so this might give us better insight as to how this person is thinking feeling and wanting to act I also think that right now this person could be in the process of uh, tweaking and um, removing relationships in their life, especially certain friends um, or family members or people that they're involved with that have been kind of a more challenging or negative influence. I feel like one thing that you've shown a light on for them is what healthy relationships, especially with like friends, looks like. I feel like you have been so instrumental in your person evolving and and growing and transforming and i feel like the world that they were in when they met you they're realizing that world like not only do you not really fit into that world but like that world is not authentic to who they truly are and who they're becoming and so it's almost like it's like they're preening and pruning their world to fit you in it better and to be more supportive of the person they're becoming. So Spirit, can we clarify what Pile 2's person has been thinking about? Can you clarify? Okay, we got those there. A lot of thoughts. Okay, can we clarify what Pile 2's person is feeling towards Pile 2? And finally, what um, does Pile two's person want to say in terms of action that they will be taking towards pile two okay cool what's on the back of the deck we have i like receiving from others but i'm not interested in giving to anyone and i think that if that has been their mo they you're changing that um but I also think that this could just be indicative of the fact that they're not available to give right now because they're like what they do have, they're giving to themselves. But let's go ahead and look at thoughts. So to start, we have, no matter what happens, I will always love you. We have angels, when she shuts her eyes by Mac Miller. You get me high, hold me there. This is real, girl, don't be scared. It's only fair, I warn you, that love a drug that can kill you. 
got your heart open, I'd have it never grow apart or last forever. And finally, we have Honeymoon Fades by Sabrina Carpenter. All bops coming out. Now I'm learning you like 101. You were sent to me like a one of one. Now we're going hard just one on one. Nobody else. I hope we never change. I hope we stay the same. I hope that we can love through the pain after the honeymoon fades. So I really do feel like like this person they are down bad and they are so good. These cards reveal so much. Like this person is so good at not revealing how down down bad they are for you. And I want to if you don't know what down bad means, it means like they are um they are quite literally a simp for you. They um, they have much deeper feelings than they are letting on. The, the, yeah, my uh, Gen Z translation of down bad is much deeper feelings than they are willing to let on. They're secretly down bad. And I think that that is why it is so important to them that they get themselves together now so that you're not having to deal with parts of them that they know that are not good enough and, and are not in alignment with the person that they need to be in order to be in a deeper connection with you. And I feel like there's also this fear as well of what will happen between the two of you because there's a realness to this and a vulnerability to this. And it's like, that's scary. It's like this connection, they can no longer run from and avoid the parts of themselves that they, that they have been um, avoiding and it's like now they're facing them so that they don't become issues in the connection between the two of you. But we also have, despite everything that has happened, my feelings have only grown stronger. So maybe in this absence, their heart has grown fonder. Um, and also I think that there, there might have been some real frustration on their end from like what, what you might have been showing them either overtly or covertly and they're realizing like I think they know that they can't be upset at you for that but I think that one thing that they're realizing is that your presence is not a problem your presence is a, a guiding light showing them what parts of their life are not are, are not in alignment with where they want to be but we also have I'm emotionally unavailable. So yeah, and I think they know this. Like, I think that they are emotionally unavailable right now. And I think that they are trying to be fair by you, but they also are recognizing that you're like mirroring that. And there is so much air energy here. So I definitely feel like both of you are in your heads. Both of you might be guilty of overthinking right now. And I also think both of you, um, like even though this person is faced away, the vulture is like looking back at the bee and I feel like for a lot of you your person is the vulture and you're, for a lot of you you're the bee um of course it could be vice versa but I definitely feel like the vulture is kind of like they're thinking about the bee just as much as the bee is thinking about the vulture but the difference is like the bee may be actually taking more action and the vulture is using all of their thoughts and and desires and feelings for the bee as a motivating factor for them to keep going and keep growing and then in terms of actions, we have, I know in my soul you are the one for me and I need breaks from this connection. The intensity of it can be overwhelming and isolating. So yeah, I feel like one, they want to reunite and two, they want you to know the, like they're, they're planning on telling you at some point, like how significant you are to them. But I feel like one, they don't want to jump the gun and two, they don't want to, it, it, it's, it's like they don't want to offer you like a, a a cake that's like only half baked. It's like they want to they want to be fully baked, have all the frostings and fixins and all that on there. But let's be clear, there's deep feelings here and it's like this person is working through what has caused them to be emotionally unavailable, which I did use a, as an example. Like you being open and available with your emotions, I feel like has shed a lot of light on your person realizing like, hmm, why, why don't I share emotions that way? And why do I feel uncomfortable doing this? Or why do I feel uncomfortable doing that? So I feel like overall, the the biggest guidance before we get into real guidance from Madame Megadeck uh, is to be patient and see, think the best of each other. Think the best of this situation and, and only see things in the light because it's so easy to fall down negative rabbit holes or start making assumptions 
and and start projecting and start like getting overwhelmed and all that's going to do is create unnecessary drama or create unnecessary chaos within yourselves it's just not worth it stay in the light so with that being said we're going to go ahead and finish this part of the reading off with guidance for you and i'm just using the regular affirmators deck and the affirmators deck for love and relationships as uh the cards i'm using for mega deck so oh mighty wise and powerful mega deck what guidance do you have for pile two celebration when i come across people in happy healthy relationships i give jealousy the finger and celebrate their joy when i do so i'm rooting for the good guys which means that i'm a good guy and that means all of us wins who wants to celebrate i also think this could be talking about the fact that maybe you feel ready um for a relationship and it seems like everyone's in one but you and you may feel like this pressure like you need to find something or that like everybody's getting what they want but you i always one thing that I that I've always genuinely believed and found to be true is that when I see someone accomplishing or doing something that or or experiencing something that I yearn for me seeing someone else get it to me is like oh if they can do it that means I can do it or if it's not something you achieve but something that happens then it's like oh if that's coming to them it's gotta come to me eventually like I always see other people like getting what I desire or achieving something or growing is like a sign that it's not only possible for me but it's quite literally in my circle so it must be closer than I think um but I also think that this is encouragement to celebrate your successes and not base your joy or base um or make plans based on what this person is doing I feel like you're really being encouraged especially if you're not in a relationship with them to not slow your life down or stop yourself from doing what genuinely makes you happy because this person will catch up when they're meant to and like things will work out perfectly what else does pile two need to hear what guidance could be good for them haha <laughs> yes don't take it personally which i think in general is to not take this person's behavior personally but if someone speaks starts to speak unkindly to me i'll remember that they've got something going on that has nothing to do with me like maybe they just poop their pants yes that's probably it we also have sanctuary. Good for you. It seems like you've earned some time away from the chaos of life. It could be as small as a bubble bath or as big as a trip, or maybe it's a small trip to a big bubble bath, or a normal sized trip to a tiny bubble bath, or maybe you tripped and fell in someone's bath. Whatever it is, it's waiting for you with open arms. Just pick your favorite sanctuary and unplug a bit, especially if a bath is involved. We also have wisdom. With every relationship, I gain valuable wisdom. I'm continually learning which qualities stimulate, support, and inspire me, and which ones make me want to cram a soup spoon into my ear and turn it slowly. In that sense, even failed relationships are actually successes. See how wise I sound? And finally, we have my best self. I trust that when I'm doing what's best for me and being the happiest version of myself, the right sorts of relationships will appear in my life. That means I can let go of all my worries about the future, knowing that my only job is to be happy in this moment, while simultaneously attaining a cosmic level of enlightened awareness and total psychological self-actualization. Uh, <laughs> so I definitely see this as you, you know, flying into that door of personal healing and happiness and I think the biggest thing is is that the more you focus on that and the more you continue going in that direction like the vulture person they're gonna have no choice but to do the same thing you know so I feel like the more you focus on that the more things are just going to evolve as they should and you know what I will say this as well on the off chance that this vulture person doesn't step up that's no problem, no bother to you because whoever can step up, they'll be in literally an upgrade. So you're getting the vulture or better. You're either getting the upgraded version of the vulture or an upgraded version of what the vulture could have offered you. So no matter what, this is good for you. And I feel like it's good for the both of you. Um, but also I think that optimism in this situation and open communication are the best things you can do here i also think that wearing a lot of green might be beneficial yeah because you even have green adventuring might be like i think the biggest chakra to focus on in the next 
however long is the heart chakra and just focus on keeping that heart open, looking at things through the, th the lens of love and focus on, you know, being your best self and, and giving that love to yourself first and trusting it'll flow to you in the perfect time, in the perfect way. So pile two, I'm going to go ahead and move things over to the extended where we are going to get it spicy. So if you're seeing me in Spice Town, can't wait. But if you're leaving me here, thank you so, so, so much for watching. And thank you so much for letting my ads play in the background while you do something else. I don't expect you to watch them, but that is one of the simplest and easiest ways to support me and show appreciation for what I do. So thank you to everyone who does that. But if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can like this video. You can comment down below. Let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click that little notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new reading. You can check out my merch. You can check out my social media and you can also check out my, what else can you check out? You can check out my candles. Be sure to use code ASO10 for 10% off. And yeah, I think that's it. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and for letting me read for you. I hope this reading resonated. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. I love you guys so much and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile three. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Bumblebee Jasper Sun and the Everyday Witch Tarot, this is going to be your reading on how your person is currently feeling about you. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the energy check and we are doing person A, person B format. So if you want any details, check out the intro. Everything is explained there. But to start with person A, we have the Swan and we have Open. Let's do person B next. For person B, we have the wolf and we have playful in reverse. For the connecting energies between the two of you, we have the third chakra with Archangel Shamuel and hostilities. And finally, we have Anubis with judgment. <laughs> I don't know if anyone who would be around my age saw that like really silly tv show back in the day it was called like house of anubis or something i just heard in my head where's joy and <laughs> that's what made me laugh if anyone who's seen that you'll probably understand what i'm talking about but for everyone else that's there and that's why i laughed um niche reference but anyway starting with pile well pile person one we're gonna call them the swan person a it definitely seems like person a is coming in to the situation at least their energy in this reading is a lot more balanced and also a lot more i don't want to say evolved because that sounds snooty but at the very least it's, it's a lot more matured i feel like the swan has done a lot of work on themselves and the interesting thing is, is i don't know what the situation is between the swan and the wolf the wolf will be person b but whatever the case may be, it seems like the swan is in a very empowered but chill energy towards the wolf. And it seems like the wolf is in an energy of defensiveness and um, quite literally hostility towards the swan. And so for some of you, I'm wondering if this is a situation where um, the two of you fell out in the past or if... This is a newer situation and the energies are just very like triggering between the two of you it just seems like the both of you are being triggered by this energy it just seems that for the swan person they're using it to catalyze their their growth and to just become stronger and it seems like for the wolf person they're trying to fight off these energies and trying to push them away because they may be very uncomfortable with what these energies are trying to reveal i feel like the wolf person is very stubborn i wouldn't be shocked if they have like fixed energies uh the fixed signs are leo aquarius taurus and scorpio they don't have to have those signs um but there are earth energies showing up here and i feel like the wolf person is someone who one doesn't like change and two is uncomfortable when there is change outside of their control I feel like they're taking life very seriously right now and they don't really feel very in control of their life and so that's creating a lot of stress and frustration already but the swan adds a new layer to all of this because the swan 
unintentionally, I might add, triggers the wolf in a lot of ways that are necessary for the wolf's growth, but the wolf doesn't see that. And so what the wolf is seeing is someone that's coming in and making them feel out of control, making them feel, well, I guess we'll see that in feelings, but basically the swan's energy seems to be destabilizing the wolf. And rather than the wolf taking a step back and, and looking at why this is, the wolf is, is acting from a very like primal instinct to kind of just push away what is making them feel destabilized. Now, on the swan side, it seems like the swan has done a lot of growth and a lot of reflection, and they're not taking the wolf's behavior personally, but they are confused by it. There is definitely a desire for them to kind of get to the bottom of things and understand why the wolf is acting the way that they are, but it seems like the wolf isn't really willing to open up and communicate that at this point, and so it seems like the swan is just accepting things as they are and working on themselves in the meantime. It seems like the swan is trying to remain open to the wolf, especially considering we have open here. And I'm, I'm really intrigued by the fact that the open card looks so similar to the Archangel Shamuel card. I really do think that the swan person may also be feeling triggered by the wolf, like the wolf's defensiveness or the way the wolf is behaving. But rather than um, pushing those triggers away, the swan's really looking at what part of them is being triggered and using that to learn more about themselves, to heal themselves, and to just continue their own growth and evolution. It's a really beautiful energy, and I would like to say if, like, the swan person is definitely in a very powerful position that they may not be seeing, but the swan has transformed a lot, and they're owning all parts of themselves in a really powerful way, and so if the wolf projects anything or if the wolf says something that isn't true the swan's gonna pick up on it i feel like neither of you really may be communicating very much right now partially because the swan person is either um taking the wolf's cues of needing space or um any communication that has been had recently seems to be not very productive. I feel like the wolf person is judging themselves very harshly, judging the swan very harshly, and judging this whole situation harshly, but it's coming from a place of d distortion. I feel like the swan is trying to come in and diffuse the intensity of the energy because I feel like the swan has recognized that in the past they've taken this situation too seriously or um, maybe the swan has recognized that the more seriously they act the more it puts the wolf on edge but i think the swan is having this huge realization of like the fact that they can't change how the wolf is behaving and that's not really their their job to do so whereas i feel like the wolf the wolf was kind of going through it and i feel like they're really having a hard time knowing what to do with like the swan's more fun playful open energy because rather than seeing it for what it is they're they're almost wondering if it's a trap of some kind or if it if there's an ulterior motive behind it. I do feel like the wolf has wounds that go beyond the swan. Like, I, if anything, I don't think the swan has wounded the wolf in any way, but I feel like this, the wolf person is just someone who has been hurt a lot, and the pain that comes from, like, the swan's energy triggering them, it, it makes them feel like the swan has ulterior motives other than just connecting with them, and what they're not seeing and what they're not realizing is that the triggers that are, are happening within them are in fact um, just parts of themselves that the wolf has like cut themselves off from or have forgotten existed that are desired, that are wanting to be seen by the wolf, that are wanting to be embodied by the wolf. And so I feel like the wolf is definitely looking at the swan with a lot of like, well, hostility is a good word, but I, I, I also think it's more like... disdain's not the right word because okay I'm hearing seven things by Miley Cyrus in my head right now which iconic song snubbed at the Grammys uh the wolf feels the so much of the way they do about the swan because there are deeper feelings for the swan than the wolf is letting on but the wolf person has a lot of fixed ideas about who they are, about how they're supposed to live their life, about who's supposed to be in their life. And the swan 
is not w one dimensional in the same way the wolf's like life plans have been one dimensional. And so I feel like the swan is kind of this like, she's quite literally like sabotaging the wolf's plans but what the wolf is not seeing is that the swan isn't doing anything other than being themselves and introducing energies into the wolf's life that they don't have elsewhere and so the wolf is looking at the swan's energies through a lens of their own experience and the lens of their own experience is pretty one-dimensional things are more black and white there is no whole lot of room for nuance and the wolf has been used to looking at things as they're either this way or they're either that way i feel like overall what's happening between the two of you uh, um it will differ based on who is watching this so for some of you this energy could be showing up as you know the swan calmly communicating to the wolf and the wolf being defensive or lashing out or being aggressive and the swan knowing that the wolf doesn't really mean that but you know being like okay geez clearly not getting anywhere with this gonna move forward or the swan and the wolf may not be communicating at all and it's quite possible that the last communication was some sort of argument or was some sort of um, challenging energy that existed between the two of you. And it seems like the swan has worked through it to a point where they can be open with the wolf and like want to work through things. Whereas I feel like the wolf, if the swan said things as well that maybe the swan didn't mean or, you know, they said in the heat of the moment, it seems like the wolf person is definitely like still holding on to that and still very much like, in battle mode they're not in a uh, diplomacy mode if that makes sense but i do feel like this energy is coming up in the reading for a reason and i do feel like the wolf knows that this isn't the swan's fault and that they can't blame the swan but they've had enough distractions in their life to kind of like ignore what the swan has been trying to show them but it seems like the swan's energy keeps coming back into their life like if you guys aren't communicating at all right now it seems like the wolf like if you're the swan for example it seems like the wolf could be um getting triggered by memories of the swan or things that make them think of the swan or like feeling the swan's energy whereas the swan may be feeling the wolf's energy a lot but like the swan is kind of used to that and is just kind of accepting things as they are but I feel like there's like this, um, in the swan's case, there's more of a <sighs> begrudging detachment. Because I feel like the swan doesn't want to detach from the wolf, but they know they kind of have to. Whereas the wolf definitely kind of seems to be not necessarily running from the situation, but at the very least, they're standing their ground and feeling very defensive around the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and get into your tarot now and see what's going on here because... There's clearly a lot of layers to this, and it seems like the wolf is not being very um, flexible when it comes to the situation. They definitely feel out of control, and they feel vulnerable, whereas I feel like the swan is just kind of like, oh, okay, it is what it is. So... I am just going to use the deck that you chose and I'm going to use it to see um, what your person is thinking, what your person is feeling, and the actions that they're planning on taking towards you. I would not be shocked if a lot of you are the swan and your person is the wolf because, I don't know, just based on these two energies, I don't think the wolf is looking up tarot readings. Um, but with that being said, Spirit, how is Pio 3's person currently thinking about Pio 3 and their connection? there's that control yeah we have the emperor and we have the magician how is the wolf feeling about the swan and i'm being told to pull three cards so i will how is the oh wow i said that out loud did i say the wolf to the swan i guess that must be for a lot of you um but i meant to say pile three's person how is pile three's person feeling about pile three please okay yeah, we have the page of pentacles how is pile three's person feeling about pile three we have the hermit pile three's person and the high priestess okay and then finally what action is pile three's person planning on taking 
with pile three in the near future. Okay. Okay. So, this Nine of Swords fell off the top of the deck. Let me see what's on the bottom. Okay, yeah, we have the Lovers on the bottom of the deck. So, this is really interesting. So, in terms of their thoughts towards you, Pio 3, they are definitely very focused on maintaining control in this situation, and there's a deep awareness that they are not, in fact, in control of this situation. I feel like your person has very grand ideas of who they want to be and they don't match reality but rather than work to get there I feel like in some ways it's almost like they would rather craft a narrative that makes them stay in that position I feel like they really care about what you think of them and how they appear and how they come across and I think the hard thing is that in their mind, they don't like the idea of looking weak or looking disempowered or looking incapable. And in their mind, there's a lot about this situation that they don't fully understand. And it's like, they don't wanna make moves until they understand the deeper significance of why this is happening. Now, I want actually want to, hmm, I'll, okay, let me circle back to their thoughts and go into their feelings because something about you makes them feel really small. The fact that we have the page of pentacles here, I feel like they are very new to kind of like inner work and I think that's something that you've inspired within them. But with the High Priestess and the Hermit being here, there's definitely a lot that they're not wanting to share with you. There's a lot of secrets that this person has that they don't really want to reveal to you. And I think that right now they definitely are in this position where they don't want to let anyone in. There's not only an emotional unavailability here, but there's also a recognition of the fact that your influence has made them aware of the fact that they're not where they want to be. They're not where they need to be. And they've been wasting a lot of time trying to convince themselves that they are. The Page of Pentacles being here as well, I feel like there's, there's an awareness that they have a lot of maturing to do and they have a lot of growing to do. And in order to get there, they're going to have to do some necessary work on themselves. And I feel like with the High Priestess being here and the Hermit, those two coming out together, they project a lot onto you, I'm not going to lie. And in that process, they are unsure of your true motives. And they also wonder what secrets you're keeping from them. There's a lot of projection here and a lot of... Um, distortion when it comes to them figuring out their own truth. I feel like they're trying to gain the wisdom to do things in a way that is uh, more evolved. I, I just heard in my head like I don't want to be like my parents. So I feel like your person's parents have played a huge role in how they act and behave now. And I think that maybe one of the hard things that they're realizing is that they're a lot more like they fa their family than they thought they were. I definitely think they're feeling this need and desire to go within and to kind of disappear from the world a little bit. They're feeling very vulnerable. They're, they're feeling very like raw. And I feel like especially with that page of pentacles being there, it's like they can't properly communicate the depth of their own pain right now. There's a lot of pain in their life that they haven't processed and there's a very healing energy to you that hurts them because the healing energy that you have makes them realize 
that they've got a lot more pain than they thought they did. And even though they don't see the pain that you still grapple with, the pain that you're still working through, they have this belief that their pain is somehow different, that their pain somehow can't be healed. Or if they had that belief, they're realizing that that's not true. And that's been a basis for a lot of their behavior for a long time. And so that is something that is making them realize like one, it's almost like they're grieving how much life they've lost from living this way for so long. I also feel like there's this recognition that even if they've been like a serial monogamist or someone who's dated a lot of people, they've never truly let anyone in. And I think that they know that they have to start becoming more aware and in tune with themselves because they're not at all. And I feel like you've served as a very important mirror to them to help them see what they need to see. But there's definitely this overall feeling of they don't want you to see how deep the wounds run, how messy they feel that they are. And one interesting thing that I'm noticing is that uh, two of the figures here are wearing the same leggings and they're and the leggings are the same color as this playful card. And so I really do feel like the wolf person, because I feel like for a lot of you, this is going to be the wolf person. They don't want to take life as seriously. And they do fully recognize that they've got a lot of growing to do. But I want to talk about their actions because I feel like death with death and the four of pentacles, it seems like they're wanting to create an ending between the two of you and them if that hasn't already occurred. If an ending has occurred between the two of you, I feel like they want to hold on to that. And I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear. I, of course, could be wrong. But death talks a lot about endings and the fact that we have the four of pentacles here. This could be an ending of them holding back so much but I feel like the reason why it's definitely an ending for now is because they're not interested in doing any of this work out in the open a lot of their cards have to do with being hidden the unseen and the fact that in their thoughts we have the magician and we have the emperor it's like they I feel like they're uncomfortable with holding space with you until if or until they feel like they can be in control and have their own sense of power around you. They know they don't have that. And this is really a situation where not only are they putting you on a pedestal, but they're also um, devaluing themselves and not seeing the fact that they genuinely believe that their power lies in their ability to be above others and their ability to be smarter than others and their ability to be one step ahead of other people. It's like, how do you play games with someone that doesn't want to play games? Like, you're out here being Gemma Collins. I'm done playing games. I don't want to play games. If you've seen her on Big Brother. And your person is like a game master, kind of. And I really, and here's the thing. I don't want to be hard on your person um because they're clearly very hard on themselves and I'm sure you know that uh but I feel like this is a situation where your person recognizes that they are currently a sinking ship and they don't want you to drown with them which it's clear that you won't because you're a swan you'll float on the water but with your person it definitely seems like any action that they plan to take is to kind of and what has ever been happening between the two of you or cut off interaction with you because they're not ready to open up to you in any way. They're not ready to move forward. They're not ready to be seen. They're not ready to be seen by anyone else, especially. It's like they're very uncomfortable with them seeing themselves, let alone seeing other people now that doesn't mean that they don't have feelings for you because they do but life is more complex than that and functionally this person is recognizing that 
your dynamic is or would be very dysfunctional because they are not able to engage with you in the same way you engage with them. And I feel like it's taking this person a lot of time because they don't want to let go of you. They don't want to let go of, of this situation, but they also know that it's not fair to you to hold on to you and it's not fair to, to give you the runaround or give you um, it's not fair for, for you to have to deal with their own crap. They know that they have to deal with it themselves. And I think that this is a very important process for them when it comes to healing because I, I there's whatever you feel intuitively in terms of how this person feels about you i would honor that because i think that there is definitely truth to it but i think the truth of those feelings are something that they need to sit with and that they need to work through because those feelings are not invoking feelings of harmony of connection of um, growth of healing but rather those feelings are evoking distance, pain, insecurity, lots of just challenging, challenging energy that this person doesn't really know how to deal with. And they do have free will to deal with it however they wish. And so I do think that right now, their way of dealing with it is to try and bury it and try to take a step back to just be on their own and be independent. One thing that they don't see is the fact that you're more similar than you realize, and maybe that's something you've communicated, but this person is really deep in their own experience, and so it's hard for them to see beyond the lens of their own pain because they're very used to seeing, because they're, they really only have space right now for their own pain and suffering, and I think that they're on this path of recognizing that they want to heal, they want to grow, they want to improve. But the way in which they do that has to be on their own terms. And it, and they don't want outside help because then they are worried that they wouldn't have truly earned that growth. So I'll clarify um, this stuff with what these energies, with what your person... I'm going to use channel messages to clarify your person's thoughts, feelings, and actions. Um... But I do say with the Emperor and the Magician, like this person wants to show up in a way that's more powerful. This person wants to be magical like you are, but they have no clue how to get there. And the irony is, is that they could talk to you about that. They could talk to you about healing. They could talk to you about growth, but your person is very stubborn when it comes to how they choose to do things. And they are definitely choosing to do things the hard way but with that being said we are gonna have an extended and it seems like some of the prompts for the extended are not going to work uh for you so we're gonna it's still gonna be spicy and we're just gonna i'm just gonna tailor things to be more about the person that's coming in for you or like the next person um We'll leave some of this person's energy in here. Um, but for like stuff in the near future, because I do feel like in the near future, this person is going to be working on themselves and in their own energy. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have fun. So we're going to look at, um, I'm just going to tweak things to make it work for you better. But I really do want to see what this person would say and how they would clarify these energies, because I do feel like there's a lot more than what they're letting on in terms of their feelings. Um, but I feel like a lot of it is bottled up and a lot of it they are trying to not reveal. And so I'm only being shown so much and there's only so much I can do. So <sighs> Spirit, Pile 3's person, what are they thinking about when it comes to Pile 3? What are their thoughts when it comes to Pile 3? What are their thoughts when it comes to Pile 3? What are their feelings when it comes to tile three, please? What are their feelings? Okay. Too many cards are falling. 
Okay, these are feelings. Lots of feelings going on. Okay, and then actions, please, spirit. Okay, so those are actions. What's on the back of the deck? Back of the deck is I would do anything to keep you safe. And that includes keeping you safe from themselves. And I think that that is the thing. There's a deep amount of care here. This person cares about you a lot. And I feel like they care more about your happiness than they do holding on to this connection. Because I think in a lot of ways, they do create a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, oh, I, I couldn't make them happy. I couldn't um, be what they need. And maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. But the point is, is that considering they believe that, that is going to make it very hard for anything otherwise to occur. But let's look at their thoughts. So we have our love transcends traditional expectations and conventions. And so I definitely think that um, you could have some sort of like soul connection with this person. You will know if that resonates. Um, but, you know, the thing is with soul connections is that they're very powerful and they transcend beyond the material but just because there is a soul connection there doesn't mean that it's always going to be very functional on a physical level and if and in order for soul connections very powerful ones to balance themselves out y'all have to be balanced also on a physical level mental level emotional level and i think you've been doing a lot of that it seems like this person hasn't been and so when you're around them, you're going to trigger a lot of what they what they need to do, whether they recognize it or not. And you're gonna be triggering within them a lot of the work that you've already done that they haven't. And how they respond to that, especially if they, since they seem to be responding to it with anger, frustration, projection, self-pity, you know, all of those energies are compounding and they are just wanting to shut down and run away rather than deal with that. Um, I think the hard thing for you is that there's not really a whole lot you can do here. And that doesn't really mean that you have to do anything with like your feelings for them or anything like that. But it, it does mean that you do have to put yourself first and you do have to, well, like I said, you don't have to do anything, but sometimes, you know, the most loving thing we can do is like let people do what they feel is right. But we also have, I'm too proud to reach out to you. Yeah, like I definitely think that this person they've definitely been with very argumentative people and they've definitely been in like cycles of drama with people and i feel like they don't want to do that with you and i think that they know that they couldn't do that with you do that with you anyway and i feel like they're consciously aware of the fact that there's something deeper between the two of you and that you are very special but they're not special enough to hold that specialness and the fact that they believe that is an issue that's not the truth, but the fact that they believe that is something that they have to work through. Because if they genuinely believe that, then that is the reality. Then if they believe that they're not special enough to hold your specialness, then they aren't special enough to hold your specialness. And you deserve someone who is. But let's see their feelings. I'm too prideful to admit that you're right. I have a reputation to maintain and I worry about how this connection could alter it. It scares me how powerful my feelings are for you. And I'm so used to mirroring other people's energies towards me that it's hard to know what my authentic feelings are. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I definitely think that there is a lot in terms of this person's um, social life or family life, like whatever their main community is, um, it very much goes against uh, your energy. Not, not that they are against you, but that they, your person is a product of partially a product of their environment and who they hang out with and uh the environment that they're currently in right now is not conducive to their growth but I feel like they either don't recognize that yet or they are too attached to their current environment to let go of it but let's look at their actions now we have the only place I feel safe in is my comfort zone and you always know what to say to cheer me up and the interesting thing is, is i don't think that this person wants to feel happy right now i don't think that they want to feel good i think that this person is working through a lot right now and they're making the choice to work through it themselves 
I feel like they've wanted to reach out to you a million times, but even if they had you right in front of them, it's like anything that they wanted to say, they, they would lose the words to say in the first place. Um, they are very focused on staying in their comfort zone, and I do think that's why the action that they plan to take, if any in the near future, is to formally cut things off or formally just shut things down and hold back with you. And with that being said, never say never in the future, but I definitely think for the near future, this person is not only going to be emotionally unavailable, but also like physically unavailable and literally just unavailable in all ways because they've got a lot of work to work through and they don't want to bring you down and they don't want to waste your time either. So let's go ahead and look at what Miss, what guidance Miss Megadeck would give you. And I think what we're going to do for the extended, since it is a spicy extended, we will look at, because we were looking at uh, your person's turn-ons, like slash what makes you attractive. So instead of it being your person, we're just going to look at um, person of interest, like people of interest, people that will be drawn to you. And then we will also look at, um, I think we should look at who's coming in for you. And hmm, maybe we should look at who's coming in for you. And or maybe options. We'll get there. If you come to Spice Town, I promise we will have a good time. But uh, anyway, oh mighty mega deck, what guidance do you have for our lovely pile threes who deserve the world and deserve people that can hold their lovely energy? Everyone's a teacher. Everyone I cross paths with is a teacher in that moment. The ones who give me the fun lessons are the ones I call friends. The ones who give me hard lessons I sometimes call a-holes. They've chosen a tough job, but it's some, but someone's got to do it. So today I'm thinking all the a-holes. Thank you, a-holes, for playing a part in making me a better person. And I do think that like this person has taught you a lot of things in being a better person. And I think that you're trying to do the same. But I feel like this person doesn't want to learn those lessons or at the very least has a lot of pride in learning them from you we have abundance congratulations it seems you're due for a an infinitely big piece of abundance pie feel like you don't deserve it knock it off it's already plated and ready to hit your table reluctant to take it shut your hole abundance pie is big enough to serve everyone so get your whipped cream ready unless you're lactose intolerant and enjoy your well-deserved metaphorical dessert yeah i definitely think that there's a lot coming in for you and one thing i do want to say is sorry to your person uh if they're watching this but they're gonna have to hear this i do feel like there are a lot of people that could be coming in for you so we're definitely gonna look at that in the extended and just kind of see like what makes you attractive like to other people I'm sure there are plenty of things, but we'll just see what the cards are showing. And I really just kind of want to see like what opportunities are coming in for you and um, what you could be attracting, especially in a spicy sense. So yeah, no matter what, even if you're not visiting me over there, which is absolutely okay, I definitely think there are good things coming your way. And I feel like life is really encouraging you to stay open because the ones that are closing themselves off to you, like your person, um, those are the ones that are not meant to be there, at least not for now, until they can be open, as open as you are. And finally, we got two more. We've got friendliness. Whenever I smile, I make someone's day better. What a cool way to buy happiness for free. Today, I will remember what an awesome power I hold. I'll take joy in improving lives by simply giving away grins like crazy. Note, in a pinch, money will also work. And we have communication. Wonder how that other person's feeling? Ask them. Wish they knew how you were feeling? Tell them. You've just been drafted into the communication army where there is a strict do ask, do tell policy. Speak with kindness and gentleness. Reach and reach an understanding. If you don't, assumption will just make asses of everyone, including the person who came up with that aphorism. So yeah, I feel like if you've been waiting to really talk to this person about how they've been making you feel, I feel like you're really being encouraged to do that. Um, I feel like ultimately 
if this person is unwilling to communicate with you in general, that's just kind of a sign of where they're at. Um, but I also think that if you really want to give this person your two cents, as long as it's in alignment with the version of you that you are now, and it's and it feels good to you, you can either send that to them or write it in a letter and burn it or something like that. But I feel like at the very least, it seems like you have things you want to get off your chest with this person. And um, it might be a very good idea to do that. But pile three, that is where I'm going to leave this reading. Thank you so much to everyone who let my ads play in the background because that was one of the simplest and easiest ways to support me. But if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can check out the extended. You can check out my merch. You can check out my candles. Be sure to use code ASO10 for 10% off. You can check out my uh, other videos. Oh, my social media, which is just Instagram. Um, but I think that's it. That's all I have for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry this probably isn't the message that anyone wants to hear, but I will be honest and that is what I was getting. If that does not sound like you and your person, then don't take this if it doesn't resonate. But thank you guys so much for letting me read for you. Um, I really hope you're not too mad at me. Um, I'm sure you won't be, but you know, these messages are hard to give and I wish I could give a different message. Um, I pray for you and I pray for your person. I hope your person works through whatever it is that they're needing to work through because um, it's clearly a lot and it's cl clearly heavy, but I feel like the universe knows that you don't deserve to have to sit in that heaviness with them. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see some of y'all over in the extended where we're gonna get spicy and have fun. But if you're leaving me here, which is absolutely okay, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile four. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the gold stone star and the tarot and wonderland deck, then this is going to be a reading on how your person is currently feeling about you. So we're going to go ahead and start with the energy check. If this part does not resonate, then this is not your reading. Um, if you resonate with both sides, that's absolutely okay and often indicative of mirroring. So to start with person A, we have the turtle and evolve. For person B, we have the rabbit and ease. And then for the connecting energies between the two of you, we have caring connections and the feather of mott with lightness. Okay. It's kind of interesting. This has never happened. I use, for those of you who watch me, um, I use this deck quite a lot. And I don't think I've ever had the turtle and the rabbit come out at the same time. But that, of course, makes me think of the, tur the tortoise and the hare. Um, and also in Alice in Wonderland, there is a white rabbit who is uh, constantly worried about being late. <sighs> Take a deep breath, pile forward. Oh my gosh everything's fine. This is actually really good, really positive energy. I want to start with the energies within the middle because this is undoubtedly a connection where you both care about one another quite a bit. And this is also a connection where you can trust that you will do right by one another. I feel like this is either a newer connection or a connection where the two of you are not able to like be be together very often or be together as much as you would like like for some of you for example this could be long distance or maybe it wasn't long distance but then it became long distance um no matter what i feel like this is a connection where there's clearly a deep level of like care here um but there definitely hasn't been much communication in terms of like heavy serious topics and i think the reason for that will differ for each of you but interestingly there is some sort of intuitive understanding between the two of you where i feel like the turtle's trusting in it more than the rabbit is let me just get there um i want to start with a rabbit actually because the rabbit is not trusting this connection the turtle's great the connection feels really good and everything's flowing very easily almost too easily 
that's suspicious and the rabbit doesn't trust it the rabbit is terrified because i feel like the rabbit definitely has feelings for the turtle is really enjoying this connection but it they feel like the connection isn't progressing quickly enough whereas the turtle is quite happy with the pace that the connection is going at and they are quite set on how they feel about the rabbit which is they care very deeply about the rabbit and they care very deeply about this connection i feel like for the turtle they have a lot going on in their life that kind of requires them to make slow progress i feel like the turtle in general may just be slower to make things happen like they they i feel like the turtle is very concerned about things happening in a slow but um comfortable pace Whereas the rabbit, I think, is used to connections unfolding very quickly. And so when things aren't unfolding at the pace at which the rabbit would like it to, or the rabbit expects it to, the rabbit starts to worry. I feel like the rabbit could be dealing with a lot of doubts and uncertainty about the turtle, wondering like where the turtle's head is at, if the turtle really actually has similar feelings. I'm noticing the fact that the turtle's looking upwards and the rabbit is looking over there, which is the, um, it's the right. I don't know my left from my right. Don't roast me, okay? I know some things about stuff, but you can't expect me to understand the left from my left from my right. I'm not a genius. I'm not Einstein. And quite frankly, it's unfair that you expect me to. Anyway, <laughs> um, the rabbit is looking off in the distance. And I think that this is really indicative of the turtle is very focused on the future of this connection. They know how they feel and they're very grounded in that feeling. They care deeply about the rabbit and I think that they find the connection to be very balanced. And I feel like the turtle is recognizing that they're either not at the place yet to progress the connection forward, whether because of external logistics like location, career, um, or they just may need time for things to unfold more naturally. The turtle. I mean, turtles aren't known for their wicked speed. So I do feel like this is someone who's very slow and steady and they want the pace to be slow and steady and they want the connection itself to evolve in a very slow and steady pace. I feel like they think that that is what's healthiest and also that's what they're most comfortable with. I think the turtle has learned from past mistakes of maybe being in the rabbit's shoes a bit where they jump into something too quickly and then get caught up in a situation that they don't necessarily want to be in. I feel like they care very deeply about the rabbit and they feel like this is the fairest way for everyone moving forward, for just things to move forward at a more grounded pace, at a pace that is comfortable and at a pace that, that, that flows naturally. Whereas the rabbit may be worried that things are happening too slowly and maybe taking the fact that things aren't happening the way that they, as quickly as they thought they would, as a sign that the turtle is uninterested or that something will go wrong. I feel like the rabbit doesn't trust how easy and how good things feel. The rabbit is teeming with worries about how things could go wrong, about how, um, about worries, quite literally, it's making me think of the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland that's holding that clock and being like, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I forget what, what his whole point and arc was, but I'm pretty sure it's that he wasn't or he was perpetually late in the sense that he always felt that way I don't know I haven't I haven't read that book in a long time I'm, I'm gonna be real but what I do know but for all the rabbits watching I feel it is important to know that you are not late and that in fact everything seems to be unfolding quite beautifully I do feel like the one thing that I would give a little critique on is maybe it would be beneficial to have a conversation about where things are heading or just how you're feeling in all of that because I feel like the both of you have a sense of fairness to the to the other the both of you want are like clearly kind to one another and care about one another so I feel like you can address challenging topics in a way that isn't combative or confronting but i feel like the both of you are afraid of doing that because that seriousness makes it more real you know the fact that we have this lightness here is it's nice to feel that lightness it's nice to feel like things are just flowing very well but there isn't a sense of like 
security on the rabbit's end. And I think the reason the turtle feels a sense of security is because it seems like this connection evolving is on the turtle's time. And I don't think that that's because the turtle has all the power. I think it's because the turtle is the one with the circumstances, with the external circumstances that make progressing this relationship further harder. It seems like the turtle is bound by certain obligations and expectations that take time to move through. And I will say, I do think the turtle is taking advantage of that and, and using that as an opportunity to I wouldn't say drag things out. It may feel like things are being dragged out for the rabbit, but for the turtle, it's giving them the necessary space that they need to handle being open and vulnerable again with another person. Because I think that they may have like closed themselves off quite literally. They may have been in their shell for quite a while um, after being hurt in some way. And I feel like the rabbit is dealing with the fear of being hurt quite literally um, and, and working through that in a very chaotic way if I'm being honest whereas it seems like the turtle is working through that by just going with the flow and focusing on what they need to like focusing on their next goal and and not and trying not to worry too much about how things are going to unfold because if they're meant to happen they will happen and I feel like for the turtle person it's like let's just take things slow and steady let's just see where things head but I feel like the turtle hasn't communicated that. And so the turtle's feeling pretty like pretty fine, like knowing things are going to evolve in the pace that they will. Whereas the rabbit person may have less of an idea of what's going on. They may be worried that like if they bring up that conversation, then they'll annoy the turtle or that the turtle will be upset with them. But really the biggest thing here is that everything's unfolding as it will. And even in this in this card it talks about letting things unfold in time and trying not to rush or force things and i think that things only feel very slow to the rabbit because the rabbit likes to progress things more quickly or the rabbit is used to that and this may be a different experience for the rabbit but the rabbit is definitely recognizing that they have no reason to like run away from the situation or blow it up or anything like that. Just split. like, I feel like they're just having a hard time trusting how easy things are flowing and how good things feel. Like it must be a trap, but I, I don't think it is. I think you both genuinely care about one another. And I think you both care about doing things right and not doing things in a way that is careless or messy. And so I think that, you know, the turtle is kind of, you know, taking the reins here and being like slow and steady is gonna win this race. Whereas the rabbit's like freaking out a little bit. And I think what the what the race you're winning is, is to moving this connection forward in a way that um, is more serious. But with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into your tarot. Oh, this is, this is not your tarot deck. Glad I noticed that. This is your tarot deck. <laughs> Oops. Okay, you're, you're probably like, wait, what? What? I didn't pick that deck. You're right, you didn't pick that deck. Um, I just didn't put away Bio 3's cards. <laughs> Silly me. Anyway, while I'm shuffling, I do want to say that uh, there is going to be an extended for this reading, and it is going to be quite spicy. We are going to be looking at things like what your what about you turns your person on, what they're attracted to by you. We're also going to be getting a lot of juicy details about the physical connection between the two of you and if you haven't been physical with them, what that will be like. So if you want to check that out, that'll be linked down below. But if not, I'm just grateful you're here. A super easy way to support me if you want to and enjoy these readings is to just like the video. Leave me a little subscribe. Comment if you're feeling bold. Let me know how the reading resonated or just anything you want to say. Hopefully it's kind, but you know, you do you. Anyway. Oh, that was a bad shuffle. We gotta do one more. We gotta get a good shuffle. Okay. So, spirit, pile force person. What are they? Oh, I'm gonna get like what they're thinking about you, what they're feeling about you, and then actions they're planning on taking. So, Spirit, what is Pile 4's person thinking about Pile 4 at this time? We have the Queen of Pentacles. It's Pile 4 thinking about... Pile 4's person thinking about Pile 4. Oh, 
and we have the star. This is so sweet. Okay, and what is Pile 4's person feeling about Pile 4, please? We have Temperance. What's Pile 4's person feeling about Pile 4? I feel called to get one more, so I am. We have the Seven of Wands. Okay, that makes sense. All right. And then finally, Spirit Actions, which for that we have the Seven of Cups and the Three of Wands. And another card just fell off the top, and that is the Page of Pentacles. Okay. So, interesting. All right. And I, I feel like it's very interesting that the, the rabbit from the Three of Wands came out here as well. It's on the back of the deck. Ooh, back of the deck is the Fool. Okay. So, the thoughts coming from your person are very, very, very sweet. The fact that we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Star, they see a very bright future with you. And with the Queen of Pentacles here, they could see you. So when I, whenever I see the King and Queen of Pentacles, I see that as like um, life partner material. You could remind this person of their mother. And if you do, it's in positive ways, not negative ways. Um, you don't have to be a woman in order to remind someone of their mother, by the way, but it's just your energy. But I also think they could see you someone that they grow old with. They feel like you have this gentleness to you that is so precious. And I feel like they see a dependability and like a real future with you. They, they feel like the, the vibe with you works. And the fact that we have this star here, they, they find your presence to be very healing. And I feel like they think about you a lot, probably a lot more than you realize. I feel like they see you as a sign of hope and also a sign of things getting better. I feel like there's a lot they haven't told you in terms of the hardships that they've gone through and the challenges that they felt that they faced and experienced. And I think that your person is used to carrying those things alone. But I definitely think that they're thinking about the future with you and the future they want to have and so in a lot of ways they're thinking about what they need to do to get there and we'll we'll get there in actions but they see you in the most beautiful light they they see you as someone that quite honestly they feel like is out of their league but like you're out of their league not vice versa um and so they really care about making sure they show up in the right way making sure that they give you what you deserve and i feel like more than anything they see you as like potentially being their life partner. And so, and that's something that they take very, very seriously. And that, and so that's why they're taking you and this situation very seriously. And I guess that would actually make a lot of sense as to why they haven't like talked to you about that. Um, and why you guys haven't had a more deep conversation about where things are headed, because maybe they're afraid to say out loud that that's really how they see you because that makes it real. And what if you don't feel the same way? And what if you're scared by it? And what if, you don't want that and so I feel like they've had their heart broken in the past and which pile force person haven't we all come on okay we've we've all gotten our, our hearts broken like it's a tale as old as it's time but you know they've had their heart broken and they also they don't want to reveal to you that they see you that way quite yet partially because they want you to be your authentic self. They want you to be who you truly are. And they want you, they want to tell you that in an organic way, not in a way that's like trying to make sure you don't want to run away from them, if that makes sense. I feel like part of the, part of the reason why they haven't told you that is because they, one, they, they don't want to like hold you back from anything. Like they don't want to alter your decision making process and i feel like they they are under the belief that if it's meant to be it will be and also that they see you as someone that like that they want to be with long term and so if you're truly long term the time that you take getting to know one another and progressing this connection will just be part of that i feel like this person really cares about taking their time with you and letting this letting this connection ground in a very natural way and in a very 
that's the right word. They just want things to flow naturally, I guess. And, and they also just don't want to jump into something too soon. It's like they really care about doing things right with you. They don't want to dive in head first. They don't want to get in a situation where um, they open their life and heart up to someone too soon. And it's not that they don't trust you. It's that they, they just like, they've just had experiences in the past where that happened and they are not going to repeat those mistakes. So now with their feelings, let's, let's get into them because they make a lot of sense. I must say your person has a very like, has a lot of willpower, like an immense amount of willpower because they just want to rush forward and say, fuck it to the plan and like keep moving forward anyway. They spend a lot of energy fighting off um, that urge to just rush things forward and move things forward because I feel like there is a part of them that is dying to, to tell you about how they're truly feeling and, and what they see in you. I feel like they're just really afraid of doing that because one, it makes it real, right? And, and opening up about all that, it's intense and it's scary and they might be afraid of that. They might be afraid of like, oh, this, this could be like my person, this could be it, that's really scary. And so I feel like they're like, well, the best way to go about this is to just be patient. So the fact that we have temperance here, they, they're they definitely feeling like the, the best course of action is to be very balanced in the situation and to take things slow. You know, temperance is a card of patience. But there's so many like beautiful energies in this temperance card. They feel like you balance one another out very well. They feel very protective over you. And if you guys are at a distance, I think that's something that's very frustrating to them because they, they can't be around you as often. They wanna be, especially, I, I guess, you know, one thing too is, is that if you are at a, at a distance from this person, you know, it would make sense why they want things to move more slowly because, you know, if you can't see one another very often, is that very fair to, to the other person to be in a relationship that you don't have time for? But this person is very focused on making things work and, and finding balance in their life to add you in it. I feel like they see you as like part of the plan in terms of like, you are the type of person that they see themselves living their life with. But there's things they have to cross off their list. And that's something that kind of scares them. So we're going to take this slow and steady and, and pace ourselves. With the temperance card here as well, though, they really want to commend you on your patience. And want to commend you on how caring and just kind you've been to them. They feel like your exchanges have been very even and they also feel like the connection between the two of you is very balanced. With the Seven of Wands being here as well, I feel like there's a lot of challenges that they're dealing with in their life that they haven't told you about and I feel like they're actually, there's more that they've wanted to tell you that they've held back on telling you because of unforeseen challenges like showing up in their life that have taken them their time and energy away from like their personal life and things like that. And it's like, I don't know why they don't want to tell you these things. I don't know if it's because they, they don't want to like add any frustration in the situation or they don't want to look like they're making excuses because they're not. Um, but I feel like there are challenges that they're battling that once those are through, they will be a lot more active and moving things forward. I do think that things will pick up pace, but impulsively, they just wanna move things forward now. They just wanna say fuck it, but they know that that's not the right thing to do. And I really do feel like this has to do with like obligation, like work obligations or um, important things that they need to get under control, that they need to dedicate a lot of time and energy to so that they can dedicate more time and energy to you. Does that make sense? But I also feel like um, they do kind of worry about you confronting them about this and getting mad at them or getting upset at them or feeling like combative towards them, but you haven't done any of that. I feel like they're, they're kind of surprised at how chill you've been with them 
but they're very appreciative of it. And it seems like there's a lot that they're battling that they don't want to tell you about because they don't want to look weak or they don't want to look like, um, look like they're making excuses, like I said. But um, with this Eight of Wands here, they definitely want things to be more, move along and be more progressed than they are. But I do think there is that hesitation of, I don't want to do too much too soon. I don't want to come on too strong. And also that recognition of things are working really well with things just being balanced and things kind of like flowing in a more natural way. They feel like you add to their life in a really beautiful way and they're noticing ways in which you're influencing them in positive ways and they really like it. They do not see any issues. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if they've had other people that have been interested in them that they've rejected or quite literally just not entertained because they they're so interested in you like they would never tell you that because they don't want to look like weak or pathetic but which I don't think that they look that way that's how they think they look that way it's let me clarify that but I think quite literally they um they they also might I add worry that there are other people vying for your attention and affection. And the way that they handle that and deal with that is, well, if someone is more interested, if, if they are more interested in someone else, then they'll choose them and I'll have my answer. So I guess one thing you do need to know is, is that if, that this person, while they're not entertaining anyone, if you are entertaining people, I would be very like, cognizant of who you actually want to spend your time and energy with um because I do feel like the universe could bring about a couple options for you same with this person and it seems like your person is taking a very clear stand on what they don't want and what they do want is you so with that being said in terms of their actions uh they are continuing to move things forward. They know. I definitely feel like travel could be on the cards, but they don't know when. This page of pentacles to me really speaks of solid beginnings and doing what they need to do in order to be in a position to be able to move this relationship forward. With the seven of cups being here, they don't know what specific action they're taking yet. I feel like they're fantasizing about a lot of different things and a lot of different options. It seems like there's things in their life right now that are not um, that are not clear yet. And because of that, it's hard for them to move forward in their own personal life, let alone in a connection with someone else. With the Page of Pentacles, I feel like they still have some work to be done and seeds to be planted. And I feel like those, I feel like the biggest action they will be taking towards you, pages are communication. So eventually communicating to you what general direction they're heading in, what what their plans are, how they see you fitting into those. And I think too, there will be just a lot of like communication in general. Um, it, might be, it might be somewhat sporadic depending on how busy this person is, but I think a lot of this has to do with communicating about intentions, communicating about where they want things to head and where they see things going. But I feel like it's not going to be all at once. I feel like they might start dropping hints and then I think that they might start getting more... I feel like they want more clarity on where your head is at, but they just don't have the courage to ask you yet. So I feel like they're just going to be kind of dropping hints and, and kind of giving you information once they have it. Because I feel like really called to say that like certain things you want answers to, they don't have answers to. Um, but with the three of wands, it's kind of like they're in this position of like actively waiting, like like getting what they can done, can get done now and like accomplishing what they can now, waiting for things to move forward. And I, I can't help but notice like we're one wand away from the four of wands, which the four of wands is like celebrations, unions, things like that. It, it seems like this this person is really focused on action in their personal life that is going to uh, help propel them forward. And I feel like with the Seven of Cups, even though they don't know necessarily what what that is yet, like where they're going, a lot of their fantasies have to do with like you being in it. And I feel like they're extra motivated right now to just set themselves up for success and 
and be more on your level like they they could see them see themselves as like the page of pentacles and you as the queen of pentacles for example so they may be like i don't want to be a page i want to be a king like i want to be on that same level and so a lot of their action right now could be setting themselves up for success in their personal life um to be able to have a more equal balanced give and take between the two of you i definitely think that they are uncertain of what the future holds but they're not um not by any means uh letting go of this connection or letting go of you i feel like more than anything they they stress and worry a lot about like how you might be taking like their behavior i feel like they they feel very behind and like frustrated but they also like don't want to make any promises that they can't keep so it's like they're holding back because they know it's what's best but I, I will not be I would not be shocked if there's something that comes together in their personal life that then that gives them the confidence to start moving things forward a lot more quickly. So I'm gonna get some channel messages now with my beautiful handwritten notes and uh see what we're just gonna clarify these energies. You give us a good shuffle. If I can shuffle it. No cards are kind of hard to shuffle. So, Spirit, what is Pile Forest? Okay, you're definitely on their mind. That came out so fast. Like, they think about you a lot. And I feel like they don't want you to know how much they think about you. And here's the interesting thing. It's like they're, they're investing a lot of time and energy into making you think that they don't think about you and, like, fantasize about you as much as they actually do. And I think that's just because, like, they want to look they want to come off as like tough they want to look like it's like they don't want to give their cards away um and i also feel like you probably haven't been very forthcoming either maybe if you were more forthcoming that would change things but i don't know i feel like they're more comfortable with like things progressing at a slower pace and they're kind of like enjoying the mystery of things like unfurling it's stressful but enjoyable to them um you're also something to look forward to and like one of the few bright spots in their life right now and they don't want to take you or that for granted what do they feel for pile two pile two pile four please let me get one more what do they feel for pile four and then can you clarify their actions towards pile four in the near future, please? Actions towards pile four. Okay. Back of the deck is our love transcends time and space. Don't box it in with human distortions and expectations. This was on the back of the deck in another pile too. Anyway, in terms of their thoughts, we have, I'm not good at expressing how I feel, but my feelings are real and true. Yeah, they're, they're definitely expressing those as not their strong suit, but they definitely feel them. And I want to have a heart to heart with you. So that's definitely coming. Like this person knows that they need to open up to you about how they've been feeling. I feel like they're just working up the confidence. And you know, if there is distance of some kind, they've got that working in their favor. Um, I feel like part of the reason why this could be moving slowly is because they like they want to have a real conversation about feelings but it's just scary doing that um it's scary like having to talk about those means they have to like make them real and i feel like this person is really afraid of something real again but their feelings are real and true so in terms of their feelings we have how do i know you won't leave me like everyone else yeah and i feel like that's the thing too is like I just heard easy come easy go and so i feel like part of the reason why this person is taking things so slowly is like it, i wouldn't call it a test because i don't think it's like conscious but i think it's like well if they're only just interested in a good time then like they won't be patient and they'll leave and i'll have my answer but i definitely think they're afraid of abandonment and so it's like taking things slowly is part of how they're they're knowing and despite everything that has happened my feelings have only grown stronger and we have defined counterparts. So this person could be um, a spiritual counterpart of some type. This person could be a, obviously only you can know that, but um, if they are, then you certainly don't need to worry about the timing of things because everything will unfold as it should. Um, 
I feel like more than anything though, this situation is probably bringing up a lot of triggers and insecurities for the both of you. And it seems like you're working through them as best as you both can, but not talking about them is leaving you both like unsure of where the other is at. Um, but finally, in terms of actions, oh, we have Lifetime by Justin Bieber, which is a fucking banger. And I will not take any Justin Bieber slander on my page. Have you heard his newer stuff? It is, well, newer. I don't know when the last time he's released music, but it's pretty good. Um, but this is what I say when I mean, like, this person is seeing you for, like, seeing you as, like, someone that they could, for, like, long term. So this song is, you are my it's a good song you should fucking listen to it you are my everything i'd give up everything show me the darkest parts of your heart i ain't gonna run every dance is slow every kiss is whoa they say you know when you know well i know i know you're the one and i even that every dance is slow like i feel like that slowness is part of this and i feel like this person is really looking at you as someone that they could see spending their life with and with that being said they're trusting that if that's the case, then this can unfold and it doesn't have, like, they don't have to, like, rush, like, there's no point in rushing things you have your whole life, you know what I mean? And finally, we have, I'm surrendering this connection and trusting in Spirit's plan. So, I feel like they are surrendering in terms of, like, not you, not the connection, but they are surrendering, like, knowing how and when things need to unfold exactly and trusting that, like, they will know when the time is right for, for certain things to happen. They will know when the time is right um, for things to move forward. And I think that you both are are dealing with a lot of abandonment wounds, um, a lot of insecurities in general, but I feel like your person especially is really afraid of being abandoned. And so I feel like they're almost like not setting, setting you up to make that happen, but also kind of like, they're not doing that, but they are like taking things really slow because they don't want to dive in too deep too quickly and then you decide that you're not actually interested in them and they're left like heartbroken you know what i mean which to be fair is not fair to you that they're not expressing that but um i believe in your person's ability to show up and do what they ought to do so we're gonna finish the free reading off before we get into the extended by looking at uh guidance and advice from Miss Megadex. So I'm using two versions of the Affirmators Oracle for that. So, oh, wise and powerful Megadex, what guidance do you have for our amazing pile fours? We have sensuality. Embracing sensuality doesn't necessarily mean you're a middle-aged swinger. It does mean that you go and check out Asa's Extended because it's going to be all about sensuality. It simply means you're savoring one of the coolest aspects of being alive, sensory input. It's time to get decadent and reward yourself with gifts for the senses. You could drop a wad of cash on champagne and chocolate. That's great. Highly recommend. Or you could tune in to enjoy the incredible gifts around you. The taste of an orange, the sounds of the forest, the texture of corduroy. I don't know your life. The point is, it's time to savor whatever your senses grab hold of, even if that means you're being sensual. Gross. I definitely think that this is an encouragement for you to um, embrace, like, just the finer things in life in general um, and give yourself that permission, especially if you're the rabbit because it seems like you've been overthinking a lot and not giving yourself that opportunity to just savor the small things. But what else, a oh, wise and powerful mega deck, do you need pile four to know? We have self-love. <laughs> but you're rolling your eyes. I openly embrace the feeling of self-love, the PG kind. I love, well, the PG, well, the rated R kind will be in a minute. <laughs> I love myself because I understand myself. I love myself as the most committed partner I will ever have. I show myself love any way I can. And when I screw up, I remember to be sweet and gentle with myself. If not, I'm going to make myself sleep on the couch. Got that, self? What else? We have resilience. Sticks and stones may break my bones and unkind words can somehow drain every bit of joy and color from my once rosy life, but nothing can permanently damage me, damage the real me. I love myself, I cherish myself, and I vow to remember that I'm always camped out in the depths of myself, even when I don't feel very much of myself. And maybe if you're not feeling much like yourself, maybe it's because you're investing a lot of energy in what, what this person or other people are doing. But finally, 
We have acceptance. When I get to know new people, I accept their actual traits rather than the ones I project on them. Same goes for not new people I already know. Acceptance is a delicate art that reminds us that everyone is their own unique self and we can't expect them to ever be anything but. Man, how do those snowflakes do it? And the back of the deck is perspective and I think that this is important for you, so I will read it. What does a hawk see when it flies over your house besides the family of mice living nearby that you don't know about? What will your current problems, conflicts, and complaints look like when you're 80 years old and you gaze back on the timeline of your life? In this moment, you are being given the, the gift of clear perspective, of knowing that in the end, everything is going to be probably much better than okay. Think large enough and even big issues become small. Become an 80-year-old hawk and you're really on to something. So, pile four, I am headed over to Spice Town if you would like to board the train with me. That link is down below. Tickets are $4. Anyway, if you are leaving me here, <laughs> thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you so much to everyone who lets the ads play in the background while you do something else because that is a simple and easy way to support me and show appreciation for my channel. But if you'd like to do that in other ways, liking, commenting, subscribing, those are all quite, quite helpful. Um, other ways you can do that though is you can check out my candles. You can check out my merch. You can check out my social media. Um, and you can also check out other videos. But that's all I have for you guys. So thank you so, so, so much for watching and for letting me read for you. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. And I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye!